If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Dude, uh, man. By far, Ooh. my favorite interview at Paleo FX and maybe... One of my favorite this is gonna of be, all time. I think this could be my favorite episode. This uh, is close. Time. It's yeah. close for me because man, be. Ben Greenfields was fire. Greenfields was really good too. It yeah, good. I think I definitely think if you liked Ben Greenfields, you will also really like this because we touched some stuff that a lot of people um, I think shy away from, mm-hmm. and I think that Ben Greenfield and both Paul Check are incredible people to to talk about. Oh, if you yeah. like going down the rabbit hole a little bit, like this goes even further. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like we just made it to Wonderland. Well, Paul is so animated too. So that's one of my- Oh, I wish you could see him. I right. mean, when we were doing this he podcast, must have so up, passionate. He stood up oh, four man. or five times. Yes. In it's the contagious. Yeah. Oh, and getting super excited. Check it. Paul is, he literally is the godfather of the wellness industry. No joke. He is the- the person who um, has has brought so many of the health and wellness practices to the mainstream that we take for granted now that we think, oh, I heard about this first on so and so's podcast or whatever. Paul Check's been talking about that since 1984 or whatever. Like the dude, yeah, super super brilliant. Uh, he practices what he preaches. Great guy to be around, and he does go off on tangents. He does go down rabbit holes. If this is one of those episodes you're going to want to listen to more than once. I'm for sure. Going to listen to this episode more than once. Uh, yeah. w- one of my favorite conversations. Now, I do want to say one thing. We do touch upon, uh, in you know, just one of the of the many topics we cover in this episode. Paul does ch- talk about plant medicines. Now, he did want to say this. He wanted me to read this off because he also understands that there's a great deal of responsibility when sharing some of this information. Now, Paul is a he's a legit medicine man. He has a he's a spirit guide through the Native American Council. And he's licensed under the regulations of the Native American Council to use plant medicine in healing ceremonies. He does not condone the recreational use of sacred medicines. And he encourages that anyone who wants to use them as part of their healing or conscious growth process seeks out a skilled shaman and or healer for skilled guidance. And he wanted us to say this because... It's getting really popular mm. now that people use these things yeah. and they're not respecting them. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. and we talked about that in this episode, but we talked about so much more. Well, it's, this is why I really like talking about this topic because I feel like there it is becoming a trendy thing right yes. now. We ever especially being down when we were down here in Paleo FX and we had this conversation, you know, ayahuasca and DMT and yeah, all you know, all new. these tools that are all these medicines people are using and it's becoming more of a hip cool thing to do versus like people that are really putting the work in and i think he addresses that really well in he this does. episode mm-hmm. so what a great guy to but have. we go all over the place with this episode one right. of my favorite conversations actually of all time not yep. just on podcasts i mean we we you know we got started and we just went and it was one of those there's been a few podcasts that we've done where you know we were justin and i or, or adam and i or all three of us will look at each other and go whoa what the fuck like yeah that, wow. that just blew my mind yeah, yeah. There were several of those those moments in this. Couple episode. sayings in there you want to pay real close attention to. That's because right because it's just yeah it, it, it's just the seed See, it, that I just love, drops. I love cold. how he t- it's it's like a ride when you're listening to Paul you get you'll he'll say something that will challenge your beliefs and your thought process that will borderline maybe even offend you mm-hmm. and then like in a in in the same long run on sentence all of a sudden this fucking just. Super realization. Yeah. 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 No, he'll just, he'll say something so powerful that you want to like pause the conversation. Like, whoa, whoa, wait a second. Back that up. Say that again. It reminds me of like sometimes I'll read a a book that's profound. And I don't know if you guys will do this. I'll read a page and then I'll have to close the book and think for like 10 minutes minutes about what I just read. That's, that's kind of what happens when we talk to Paul. So, uh, Paul also has, we recommend heavily to personal trainers his courses. Uh, they're the most, in my opinion, um, well-rounded courses. If you want to make, if you want to be a really good personal trainer and coach, and really focus on total health and wellness of your client. Mm-hmm. Now, we did talk them into hooking up our audience. So here's what you're going to get if you're interested in taking a look at what the check courses look like. This is what they're going to do. He's going to give you a free check healthy core cycle checklist, and he's also going to give you free access to the first lesson of the Holistic Lifestyle Coach Level 1. This is huge. He doesn't do this uh, to to many, many people. So here's what you got to do. 
You go to Czech Institute. Czech is spelled C-H-E-K institute.com forward slash mind pump and you'll get lesson one for free and then you can see for yourself if that's something yeah. you want to pursue. We highly recommend it for sure. That's it. And uh, also this month we are giving away the nutrition guide, our intuitive guide, excuse me, and our fasting guide for free if you enroll in any of our MAPS fitness bundles. You can find all of those at mindpumpmedia.com. Now it is my pleasure uh, without any further ado to bring the Paul Check interview with my pump. Uncle Paul. <laughs> this could be fun or it could be <laughs> go really wrong. Sex with an octopus. <laughs> Where do I start? Right. I imagine you head for the middle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I think that I think that's written somewhere, right? Uh, <laughs> it is now. It's gotta be a proverb somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Head so for head for the middle. You we we had we had you for the first time on our show. When was it? When did we have Paul on the first time? What two years? You guys, years, had you guys came a year to, to so. see me. At, we came to see you at the Heaven House. Yes, and so that was like two years ago, maybe. Well, I, I think close so. To it, yeah. yeah, two years ago, and at the time, you know, we had known of you. I had known most of you because I had someone who worked with me who was a, a Czech, Czech practitioner, and I knew of your work. And I remember telling these guys, and I said, "This guy's uh, the you know, no, thank you. Uh, what I I called you the oh. the Godfather of wellness. Yeah." Thank I you. said, this guy's been doing stuff with wellness that we're hearing about now for a very, very long time. A lot of these things that we think are new, of, you know, he's been talking about. And, uh, but uh, I didn't hear, I didn't see you out in our space a whole lot. Like you weren't, you weren't, you were. Not very was, visible. He's not on social not, media. He's not, no, he's not. No, right. but, yeah. but, but the people that knew you really, really loved your stuff. You came on our show. Great episode. We had a great time with you. Came on our show again. I am seeing you all over the place now. You are now in this space in a big way. Now, we got to be honest and tell Paul, too, before we ever met, we almost didn't come out. And I remember mm. part of us were like, ah, I, I don't know about this guy. We didn't know anybody yet. Mike was the only person that we had met. And it was, yeah, it was we a really one guy good, vouching for him. It was a really good thing that we met him before we met you because yeah. we really, really like yeah. Mike, as you do too. Mm, yeah. And someone like that, he we spoke, his opinion he about spoke people, so sure. highly because I'll tell you right first, if you're an outsider looking in at you, People think right away like cult guy, massive ego, all about trying to gather this network. Are you, you know, people think that. You, I know it's because heard. you have such a strong influence. It is. Yeah. It's, cause, yeah. cause, it's because of the lives you changed. And I understand it now because I've mm -hmm. been a part of it and been around it. But before that, we didn't know. And we had to, or, or, we had to work some really late night. And then we were going to have to get on a plane really early to come see you. And we're like, ah. Yeah. Well, we what are we going to tell him? You know, yeah, we we're actually uh, debating it. And we're yeah, just like, that's bad business. Out. That's bad business. We're yeah. going to go out there no matter what to meet him. And I remember yeah. all of us were like, oh my God, how, how crazy was this that we would have not met him and mm -hmm. would have pro probably got sucked in with the way everybody else thinks that doesn't really get to know Paul. Mm -hmm. And it was probably one of the one of the best interviews I think at that time. Yeah, that we it had was done. game changer. And, and now you're you're all over the space. Or I've, I've seen you on all these bigger podcasts. You're your presence is bigger. You are you getting like? Are, how is it affecting your business? How is it affecting you? Because it seems like things just exploded. Well, well, part of it is is I think a lot of people heard me on your podcast, um, and we've had many many business experts and Penny and James who do our marketing have taken lots of uh, marketing training, and over the years they you know it's kept leaning towards more and more social media type stuff but it's very challenging for me um because i watch the way ben greenfield and you guys and a lot of other people have to to work and i talked to you doug and you said to me paul i'm 50 and to keep up with all this technology and all these changes is fucking a lot of work and you know and i i look at Doug and I didn't see the 50 year old but I saw the man who's like got a lot going on man like mm -hmm. you know mothering the whole show here you know like keeping the absolutely you know man. kids yeah. running in every yeah. direction not, not, but me kids meaning <laughs> wires yep. and, and obligations yeah, yeah, yeah. and you could throw us in that mix it's too. fine yeah we, we admit that <laughs> yeah. yeah so it's very challenging for me with the, you know I, I I deal with very complex clients that have real serious life issues and or are athletes that need to perform at the very highest level and offer dealing with challenges. And I have a business to run and I'm developing new course material and I've got a two-year-old boy and I have a very hard time already f walking the tightrope of making sure I'm living the life I'm teaching people to live. 
because there's a certain point at which you cross the threshold into the black hole of mm. being something for everybody else. And you're mm. selling bullshit. Or something for money. Right. Mm-hmm. That it's been very hard for me not to get swept into that because I, I have classes where students are paying me thousands of dollars to teach them very important information. And one fucking sentence out of me could be one of the most important things you heard. I might be telling you something that's going to be exactly what you need to know for the next client you see. But if you're, so what's happening is they're constantly fucking looking at their phones and texting and Instagramming and there's mm. nobody there. There's no connection. Yeah. There's, they're, they're fragmented. Mm. You can't do the work of a Czech professional fragmented. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I am, if I'm in a relationship with you, Sal, I'm 50% of this relationship. That means I have to be 100% here to be your 50%. You got to be 100% there to be my 50%. Mm. And if 10% of me is missing, I got news for you, but that causes 10% that you can't access. And because I'm not accessing it, it's a 20% Mm -hmm. deficit in the relationship just like that. All it takes is one fucking phone when you should be paying attention to the person you should be paying attention to. Now, you know, the irony of this is uh, you you obviously have a deep passion for helping people. Yeah. And this is a message that you've been sharing for a long time. Yes. But never, I can't think of a time in human history where it's that ever, message oh needs to be heard more. Mm-hmm. Like this whole fragmented Absolutely. message that you're, you've been teaching this for a long time. Uh, but now it's more important than ever. And the irony of it all is you have to use this technology yes. in order to help people with <laughs> it. It is. And, yes. and so, like, for example, I do a lot of video blogs on a blackboard. You probably know that. Mm-hmm. And people will email me and write me, why do you do the <laughs> blog on a blackboard? You need to get oh, a, You it. need to step up your game. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's like, there's one thing. Listen, I've studied the biographies of about 140 of the greatest thinkers in the world. And you know what? There's one thing in common with all of them. Almost every one of them spent a lot of fucking time in books and thinking on a blackboard. Einstein, David Bohm, you, the list is very long. Mm. And the blackboard for me represents sticking to the fucking basics. You write it out, you meditate on it. If you can't take the time to express yourself i draw drawings on my blackboards to show people how the world works how life works hormone pathways whatever i draw birds and whatever it is by hand with color so that excuse me they're having a a real experience People can fake being an expert so easy today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More than ever. Right. You you can't trust anything you see in the media. You can't trust anything you see in front of you. I'm not into Photoshopping. I'm not into trying to be healthy for anybody else. I'm into being myself. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, like I say, I got a spot on my face. People think I got cancer all the time. No, that's not fucking cancer. That's a love affair. That's a love affair with something called tobacco and smoking herbs that gives me the chance to feel like I get to do something just for me when I'm tired of being a nursemaid for a world full of people that are fucking lost. And it's painful because I know what's going on. I know what's going on in the soil. I know what's going on in the water. Do you ever I, feel like that breaks you? Do you ever feel like it's so overwhelming oh, that it breaks you? Dude, I've had painful, painful experiences regularly. I, I gave you one right now. I don't, sorry if I cry. Um, the Part of the thing for being a presenter at Paleo is they had this uh, company there doing headshots, and the guy's apparently really quite good at it, real famous for his work. <laughs> And so Penny, you gotta go get your headshots. And then so this guy took all these headshots and you know, to do all the modeling and and then he puts his favorite ones up on the screen and Penny's favorite ones and they said, What do you think? And I I looked at myself and I looked at myself with the same eye that I look at a patient or any of you. Hmm. And I saw the pain. I saw the sadness. I saw the fatigue. 
I saw a guy that needs a year to go just paint and walk around naked and read whatever he wants to read and think on a blackboard and and not have the pressure of a big overhead and people thinking my stuff's old and outdated and you know it's mm-hmm. like give me a fucking break you guys old and out fucking dated a lot of the stuff that you think is fucking new i was talking <laughs> about when you're in your mother's womb right right What's old and outdated is me having to keep telling people how to fucking wipe their ass and blow their nose and eat real food and exercise intelligently and stop using drugs to compensate for common fucking sense living. Um, so it, it's just, it, it's tiring at times. And it's sad for me too. It's a paradox because I love seeing a lot of the things that I really pioneered the awareness of mm-hmm. or literally pioneered, you mm-hmm. know, like mm-hmm. I, pro- I, I pioneered the whole concept of primal pattern movement. Mm-hmm. I developed the concept. I have a trademark on it and people talk about it like it's old news and they go to paleo and primal this and primal that. I was fucking talking about this 25 years in 1988. I was lecturing on this, right? And um, so it's it's sort of like, I watch a lot of people who are very, very shallow in their message, oftentimes making a shitload of money, <clears throat> stealing from guys like me, mm-hmm. never giving us credit or even putting us in the reference list. Mm-hmm. And I'm seeing this sort of like um, fast food education version of what it took me a lifetime mm-hmm. of committed mastery to be able to share with my students. Do you, do you understand that was really our mission with mind pump was because we knew that and we saw that from being in the industry for mm-hmm. 15, 20 years. Yeah. And we just wanted to be the mavens who put people like you in a mm-hmm. position like this because so you yeah. sort can. of carry the torch. Yeah. Did you, do you remember what you said to us when we left that first, the first interview? You said something that I won't forget. I can't forget. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you mm-hmm. remember. <laughs> you said, <laughs> you, like, said you looked at us and you said, you know, I was, uh, you said something along the lines of, uh, you know, I plan on doing a vacation with my family. I'm out here. I wasn't going to do any kind of work. Uh, then you guys contacted me and something told me I needed to sit down and talk with you guys because this was going to help bring everything to another level. You actually told us that as we left the first oh, time. Oh, good. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you also said something else earlier. You were talking about at Paleo when you did your talk and you had about 40 or 50 people approach you and talk mm-hmm. about how you really impacted them, mm-hmm. how you really, really made a difference in them. And when you were telling that story, you, 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 you lit up. You're obviously very happy about that. It is and lovely. It's, it's, this is a, it's, a, uh, it's incredibly challenging, but there's also that kind of reward that I can see that is what drives you to keep, because you talk about how tiring it is, yeah. but you keep doing it. Yeah, and you know, I did cut back a lot. You know, Penny and I traveled almost nonstop around the world for 25 years. I made it around this entire planet twice a year, sometimes doing 100 presentations a year quite regularly. And my stuff's not just, you know, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. A lot of my classes are very intense. Like you go to check level three, it's a nine-day course. It's very comprehensive anatomy, physiology. You got check level four. It's very, very deep, heavy integration of all that you've trained, plus a lot on the spiritual elements, the psyche, archetypes, mental, emotional issues, coaching people that are problematic, and people are tricky to coach. The deeper you go into someone's core being, the more the ego reacts and defends and starts playing its games because it's like a lizard that's just been caught by the tail, and it's not sure whether to let you have its tail or... To fight and run. Or listen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> She's trying to run. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're paying you and they're trying to run. You know, it's, uh, I, I, I guess now with now that I see you on a, a lot of podcasts and, and more on social media, you're reaching so many more people. Is it, are, are you able to, are you finding now it's more, you're more effective? Are you finding that it's making it easier to work less to be able to do more? It's opening the door for more opportunities. And, and um, actually the podcast I did with Aubrey, uh, when I was in Austin last time, we, we had a class, our last class, we had three people in it that came through HLC1 to get you HLC2 and said that the only reason they came is because that podcast mm. completely and utterly blew their mind and answered questions they'd had all their lives and no one could answer. And the class before that, we had 11 people, all that same same thing, said that interview. Fantastic. and. So the thing is, is that Aubrey asked me questions 
that are deep that most people are afraid of the answers of that most people don't ever ask me. What's because, an example of that? Give me one. That, give me one of the deeper ones that he asked you. Well, he asked me what what is God? Mm. Oh, what, yeah. what when you use the word God? What is love? When when you use the word, what, what does that mean? What is the difference between the ego and the self? People talk about this. There's a million different ways to interpret it. What is it? So you know, these are the things that help a person. You know, if you don't understand the anatomy of your psyche, I have a question from you. For you, <laughs> do you know who you are? <laughs> <laughs> or you know, because if you don't understand the anatomy of the inside of what you look at as your body every day and how it got there and what's breathing you, then really you're trapped at only knowing yourself as a body. And when that body's not working for you, when that body starts getting fat, when it starts drooping, when your boobs are falling and your wrinkles are coming and you can't show everybody how strong you are in a gym anymore and your dick stops standing up so easily and you dribble when you piss and you're worried about whether <laughs> farting's going to be shitting. Um, you know. All real shit, man. I mean, right? <laughs> yeah. Comes out hot. Uh, <laughs> well, so tell us about you. Who, like, what drives you to, because I have never in my life met, and I'm a, I, I, I love surrounding myself with intelligent people. I love having deep conversations. I've never met anybody with such a, deep and wide breadth of knowledge mm -hmm. you can we can talk about biomechanics we could talk about anatomy we could talk about hormones we could talk about gut health we could talk about god and uh, spirituality racing, and you mechanics. know psychology and it's just uh, i've never what drives you to do you have an insatiable thirst for this knowledge or is it something else that's driving you to, to do all to learn all this well one thing if you look there's kind of two paths to god and um when I was a kid going to Christian Science Sunday School, something deep inside of me said, this ain't God. Th what they're talking about that created us all, all this will burn you in hell, and you know, and, and I'm like, listen, in one minute you're saying God is love, and the next minute you're asking me to sing onward Christian soldiers marching off to war with the cross of Jesus going on before and tell me if I touch my penis, I'm going to burn in hell, and everything else and i'm like like i'm i'm like eight going how did i get here like this does not even make sense and something so deep inside me said this is wrong but the point is as i grew up and saw what was behind the people's problems you know remember every action comes from a belief mm. right so every behavior that's causing someone problem whether it be a relationship with their spouse or a relationship with drugs or a relationship with sex whatever it is that relationship's behaviors are driven by beliefs. And most of those beliefs in our culture emanate largely from a Christian church. By far the most source yes, of, of sure. a belief structure is the Christian church. You know, so people come into life as children and you get to a teenager and your hormones are raging. Your dick's hard as a freaking dinner bell. And you're like, what? <laughs> you know, what am I supposed to do with this thing? When, when I touch it, it feels good. And when it, you know, does its thing. It's magic, and that's more magic than anyone else it's ever confetti. fucking gave yeah. me. So, <laughs> shit. and but then you're thinking, wait a minute. You know, they said I'm going to burn in hell if I do this thing. So yeah. now, what is it? You know, if it's not an Indian fire stick, it's nothing. But you know, the same point I'm making is that when you go back into what drives a person's behavior, their their makeup psychologically, you get to the bedrock ideas that either make you feel good about yourself, love yourself, respect yourself, know that you're part of something big and it's fucking magical that you're here, or you go into a state of anxiety or depression because you're afraid as hell that being whatever it is, the old man in the sky is fucking watching you, keeping notes, and hell's getting hotter by the fucking minute. And how do you reconcile your sex urge? How do you reconcile, you know, all the things that make a human being human, you know, food, knowing uh, what we know about the earth and what we're doing to the earth, uh, you know, when do you say, okay, I got to sell my fucking car and ride a bicycle because I'm killing the planet with gas emissions and, you know, everybody, what do you believe with all this, oh, you know, you got to be a vegetarian, not that I have that problem, I'm speaking for them, you know, but when you look at all the 
the more you start to understand about yourself and about love and about what God is, the more you realize that the people that are confused, that are so busy medicating themselves from the pain of touching their genitals or having sex on the side or lying or cheating or doing all the things that just make human beings humans, we're smart monkeys that get in trouble, um, you see that there's a lot of pain and tension there. Yeah. You know, it's... What do you say, Paul? What do you say to somebody who says they don't believe in God? I say you're probably better off because you're going to find out anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, right? Yeah. No, like, if, if you don't believe in God, well, it either means one of two things. <laughs> you're either not a very deep thinker. <laughs> <laughs> you, we're gonna you, insult all the atheists I mean, real quick <laughs> you, you give you give up on this fundamental cause question what caused that you have to ask that till you get to the bottom and when you get to the bottom there's only one thing it's yeah. either god or allah or a mystery or the zero point field but you get to an impasse. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if you don't have enough brain power to realize that you were you, the vagina which gave birth to you was an impasse. <laughs> I mean, it's the only one that fucks itself and gets pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Serious. That should I be mean, a soundbite for sure. Look, all this, all this, all this. Hmm. Uh, whining and bitching about people being gay or yeah. lesbian i'm like well if god is god then god's got no one to have sex with with god but god god's masturbating himself into ejaculation which causes birth or <laughs> putting its own hand up its own whatever yeah. right <laughs> if god is that see this is what i thought down, this right? is what i thought you were going to do with paleo FX. i thought we were going to get this side of you Come out on, on the Paul. stage I I, uh. I I came here. I go. I go. Dude, if, I, if Uncle Paul gets going, man. Fire. Wait, but it was a first date. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ken, you gotta get invited back, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Kenfit Pro has not ready for that. rated on all my lectures. Warning. Really? <laughs> Could, very controversial. <laughs> Commonly uses foul language. <laughs> Do not bring your children. Well, speaking of God, sign this waiver. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. but I'm dead serious about all this stuff. So. So, no, I, I mean, you I know when you an atheist or doesn't believe in God. Good. I say you don't don't believe in God. Good. It means at least you're not going to go to church and get your head brainwashed with a bunch of silly shit, mm -hmm. which just creates a rabbit trap in your head. And, and it's a video game you're stuck in and you believe it. Um, Do you think some people, though, have evolved now where they don't just look at that? Because I know I, I feel like I know people now that use church as a, a, a guide to help them be better people or better humans and they don't get caught up in the dogmatic part of it. It can be. Um, Do you think that's a healthy relationship with it? Yeah, you know, it's, this, 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 this is very, very deep subject material and I'm happy to go there with you. Oh, you I asked for it, Papa. You know, no, I just <laughs> said, bring it. You said, <laughs> fucking bring it, boys. I no. won't get fucking deep. No, I, no, we no, can't no, get any I, deeper I than how we got I here. I don't mind. It's just some of these things are not five minute explanations. I have to go oh, through yeah. steps just yeah. like I, you know, like sure, I Sure, sure. So just to finish the previous thought, look, if you just keep asking the question, what caused this, what caused this, what caused this, you get to an impasse. Hmm. Right? Well, what made the universe? Well, what do you, how do you answer that? Well, there has to be something fucking there because the universe is something and it's constantly mm -hmm. transforming itself. Death is all around us and we see that death makes room for life. And if you meditate on that, could life exist without death? The answer is fucking no. I'll save you the meditation. <laughs> right? Look, you guys look in the mirror each day. You see yourself, and it looks like the same goddamn Sal or Doug or Justin or Adam, doesn't it? Right? But you've got to realize if you actually looked at this scientifically, every single cell in your body, 100 trillion cells, turns over every 365 days. That's right. You're... Skin cells, you're turning them over very quickly every three days. Your bone cells turn over about every three weeks. If we keep playing this game, you actually come to the realization that what stands in the mirror is more like a fountain, right? You go to the park and you're mm -hmm. 50 feet from the fountain and it looks like a tree of water. Mm -hmm. We're a tree of cosmic energy. We're energy in formation. Everything in the mind of that which we call God is information that organized directs and forms matter and all bodies at every level, right up to light itself, which is a trick because it's a massless particle, but it makes mass. And that's the other thing. 
when you start really being brave enough to put all your preconceived notions aside and start diving into, okay, what the fuck's behind all this and what is God? You you find out it's absolutely fucking mind-blowing. And then you, you know, you do some good proper shamanic medicines at, at therapeutic doses. And I'm a guy that's explored these things like I do everything. And I've been so deep into the complete dissolve of my ego and the complete let go of being pulled into that all I can say is the abyss of non-being and in I'm an 82nd Airborne Division paratrooper that's trained to jump into hell's fire and fight like a motherfucker and I've literally found myself on a journey crying for my mother because my I was so close to complete psychic annihilation and entering into God. And I've actually said to God, God says, if you love me, let go. And I say, what about my family? What about the Institute? I'm, I can't leave Penny and die this way. She won't even get any insurance money. It'll ruin the Institute. And God says, <laughs> if you love me, let me go. If you had rather continue to be you, I will always serve your every desire. But only one of us can take the lead. And there's been times where the medicine pushed me right through the eye of that needle and I had no conscious mechanism to struggle. I just woke up and didn't even know that I was Paul Check. I was just everything and nothing at the same time. There's no words to wrap around it. It's not wordable. It's just profound, beyond word, beyond orgasm. It's just so profound that it just, when you come back from it, you actually think that this is like a puppet show comparatively this feels very so how do you keep yourself from not wanting to keep going back onto that side i, f I feel like well, people that experience that would want that's want a fucking good question because here's something interesting for you on that side of the equation love can't exist because love requires a subject and an object or a polarity Love, in my formula, L stands for life, which is L for desire. You have to have the desire to live, to be alive. You can go kill yourself anytime you want. Right. It's only because you all have the desire to live that you're here, isn't it? Right. Okay? So the L of love stands for life, which means you have to have the desire to participate to be here. O stands for zero, pure potential, unconditional love, something that can't be defined as this or that no polarity, no objective reality. VE stands for volt electron, the electromotive force, which is what creates material everything. Light is an electromagnetic reality. Volt electron stands for will. Desire and will are wife and husband. And those two constantly feed each other. And unconditional love only has two qualities. Zero is absolutely empty of anything. The feminine. Empty. But absolutely full of everything. That which has expressed itself as something knowable, positive. So VE projects itself out as the masculine. Love, emptiness, is the desire of the womb drawing into itself with such intensity that it creates its own imagination as reality, which we perceive as reality. But at the level of unconditional love, there is no, there's pure potential. There is not something here or something there. That's a condition. That requires a subject-object relationship. It's like a quantum state. It's a superpositional state okay. in quantum physics or a zero point. So the zero, the magic of zero, though, is that which is empty of itself is simultaneously full of itself because the vacuum is also the plenum. Hmm. That's the trick. So the vacuum is the emptiness of zero and the plenum is that which it desires to fill itself with, which is everything. <laughs> it gets tricky now because God is actually now. There is no past, present, or future in God. God is pure nowness. So the trick question is, okay, if you imagined the biggest amount of time you could imagine, whatever that number would, I don't care if you take your pen and start writing zeros out on every wall of this house, how long would that be compared to the absolute? 
Pales. You get it? Yeah. God is the absolute. And anything you can write, no matter how long you can write, it is always a relative of the absolute. Mm-hmm. It's never the absolute. Mm. And because the absolute contains the relative, the bigger you would make the relative, the bigger the absolute would be anyhow, mm-hmm. even though the concept of bigger doesn't apply to the absolute because there's, it, it can't be measured by any length, width, or depth. And in, in, by definition, it's beyond measure because it's the source of that which is measurable. Paul. Wh- so, you, so my point is, is that when you're there, everything else is not even conceivable. Mm-hmm. So the absolute has to have the relative for love to exist. So the empty produces the feminine force, the force of desire, the desire to move toward or to become, right? That's what a dream is, to become, to be a great athlete, to be a great lover, a husband, to make money, to have a garden. And then the will of the divine feeds itself. But the point I'm making is those two becoming each other at the speed of now, right? And matter, because it dreams matter into existence, matter ties light up which creates the illusion of time. Matter's all floating in the abyss of the absolute, but because God dreams of being Sal and Doug and all of us, and God does it simultaneously because that's God, God's got that ability, um, the now becomes tied up in an illusion which creates time. Hmm. So the now is all there is because it's absolute, but within it, is this illusion that we're going to be born and die and sure. things come and go. Do you believe we have a soul? Of course you do. How, how do you explain that to somebody? Uh, I've studied it very extensively and um, I practice communicating with my soul. That's one of the things I pioneered. I've never found anyone that teaches the soul the way I do and how to relate to it and work with it. And that's the big, one of the driving forces behind my HLC2 uh, program is how to do the, the basic training on that. But the soul I define, and my preface to this is that the soul is defined so damn many ways it'll confuse the shit out of you. I've read over 120 books on the topic, minimum. Um, I define the soul as consciousness within. The soul is that which is experiencing itself. Well, unpack that. That's too deep. Okay, so remember we just talked about zero, the absolute, right. behind the relative. But if you enter the absolute, you don't even know there is a relative. Okay. Because you can't be an absolute and a relative at the same time. That's impossible. Mm-hmm. Only God can do that. We are the absolute and the relative at the same time. But you see, if your consciousness becomes absolute, then how can you be relative if your consciousness is absolute so is the theory then that when we die that we become one with god well that's another complicated question (laughs) Um, but but let me just finish that though look if you're remember consciousness is unconditional love that's god there is no subject object relationship there that requires relativity doesn't it you understand me it requires relativity So God at that level is not conscious of God as God because God's super conscious, which just means to be conscious of everything. So if you're conscious of everything, you can't be conscious of something. You're conscious of everything or the wave is collapsed. If you have something to be conscious of, you've already collapsed the wave function. So at the level of zero, everything's happening all the time and every possibility exists now. It's an infinite number of possibilities. It's an infinite number of possibilities Mm -hmm. and all it takes is for you to direct your attention Mm -hmm. to one and it manifests, but you might think it took 20 years, but it took an instant, Mm -hmm. right? And these are complicated things for people to wrap their heads around. Mm -hmm. So it takes meditation. This is why I teach the things I do. And I say, look, you got to meditate on this. You can't just, it's not intellectual. You just, you think you understand intellectual, you don't. You have to go sit under a tall tree and think, okay, what would it be like to be completely one with God? And sit there until you have the experience and you walk away going, oh my God, I don't even know how I got back from that. I don't think it's something you can think. It has to be something you can feel. It's, um, it's very, very feeling based because you, you almost like you experience it. 
Yeah, it depends on how you use the term think. You see, when we think, we use intellectual ideas. But when God thinks, God does everything that we do and everything beyond what we can do, which is a vast, vast, vast amount. But feeling is a better description because you can convey or you can experience a feeling that you can't put into intellectual language. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's why I said that. Yeah, so feelings actually are like the foundation yeah. of a pyramid and the mind is climbing up. Mm-hmm. So when I'm talking to you, we'll call it the top of the pyramid, but down below mm-hmm. are all sorts of feelings you can't convey. No, and this is, this is an easy thing, I think, for people to understand because, you know, you tell someone, explain, uh, use words to explain the love you have for your child. Yeah. You know, good luck. You know, you're yeah. not, you can come up with all these different words that we try to use, but nothing, yeah. nothing truly conveys, you know, yeah. that message. And, you know, back to what Adam's question was, you know, with people who, ex- who really dive deep into these subjects and tend to use some of these powerful plant medicines. Yeah. You know, we've run into people that seem to either maybe abuse it, but almost just want to get lost or want to yes, escape. It's a big problem. And, and, uh, it's and then, a dangerous problem. and then you also see a lot of this, and this is a term that you introduced me to, which I thought was brilliant, which is spiritual righteousness. Yeah. And we're seeing, I feel like I'm seeing a lot of that mm-hmm. in less of, and maybe that's just a, just cause we're all human. Right. And less of the way you communicate it. Like what, what do you say to people who hear some of these things and think, Oh cool. I'm going to go, you know, eat a bunch of psilocybin or I'm going to do ayahuasca and then I'm going to figure this out. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to get all these answers or people who use it to escape every weekend. Well, here's a bit of a trick. God is a Mexican finger trap. You know what that is? Yeah, these things. You, can't get it out. Yeah. you just put your finger yeah. in one end and you say, hey, stick your finger in here. Yeah. The harder you pull, the harder it bites and you mm-hmm. can't get out of it. So that's not... Uh, that's not what sacramental medicines are intended for. That's really no different than drinking a lot of alcohol to wash off the pain of doing a job you really don't enjoy doing, enjoy doing, but you're doing it for money all week and working for someone you don't like and having sex with girls that you're not really that attracted to, but it's either that or a hand job, mm. uh, mostly your own <laughs> hand, homely and ugly. Right? Really got to wait. <laughs> yeah. um, but really knows you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but really knows you and works for free. <laughs> never, really, is, never too tired. Never either. complains about putting the elbow grease in. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so what I'm saying is, is that the medicines open you up very significantly but you have to be in the right environment so that you can be present with what's happening inside you like if you're at a discotheque doing a bunch of lsd or mushrooms you're just drowned with sensory overload and it's it's cool like uh, a new video game's cool like whoa whoa man so cool. <laughs> 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 typical <know>. millennial right <laughs> but you know if you if you do what my philosophy is, is, you know, you get a deep and meaningful question like, why can't I get rid of my anger? Why do I get so jealous uh, if my partner wants to have sex with someone else, even if it's somebody that I know is a clean person and I trust that it would be safe? And there's a lot of deep questions we can ask about things that really limit our freedom and our ability to really enjoy our life and to love our partners fully. Mm. And those questions are not easy to answer at the level that they're coming from. You understand what I mean? The, the, the man that's afraid or the woman that's afraid to, to go deeper into love like that and, or to open up the boundaries a little bit um, is trying to solve the problem from the level of the fear. You understand? Mm-hmm. Won't happen, won't work. You yeah. can't. You, like Einstein said, you can't solve a problem with the same thinking that creates it. So for me, I go into a ceremony and what I do is I, I write down what it is that I need more clarity on from God so I can live and love more fully and be more committed to and connected to and authentic with my mission and my vision and my values. I just have to reemphasize what you said with, you know, you, you can't solve a problem with the same I know. Type so way of thinking, yeah, yeah. Way, way, and, and, great quote and it, maybe if I can communicate it a little differently using a, a plant medicine is literally changing the way you think and then you can re-examine the problem you have yeah. to change the, 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 the literally the it's way you think channel for it, it, it's, yeah. a, it's a shift and yeah. then you can see things from a different angle you use the right medicine at the right dose and it doesn't change the way you think it teaches you to stop thinking and be fully present Got it. and mm. witness 
what you've been creating inside yourself and meet your own dragons mm -hmm. and feel your feelings that you've buried. For example, um, my brother committed suicide when uh, I was 35 and it was wickedly painful and very heartbreaking. And I won't tell you the whole story behind it because it would be too much to go through and it's deeply painful and emotional. But um, I remember the emotion of my mother bringing an urn of his ashes and we took him to La Jolla at the Cove and my mom got a bunch of dried rose flowers. She took roses out of her garden and dried them and we thought that he would like to be put in the ocean at this La Jolla Cove. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's a really mm. beautiful spot. And, um, the you know, the power and the sadness and me, for example, remembering, you know, I was one year older than him and he, he always wanted to be with me, but I didn't want him around. I wanted to be with my buddies. You know, I, I was older than him. Sure. I didn't want my little sidekick brother around. So I'd push him away and just things like that. And um, and when when your family member like that kills themselves because they're in so much pain, they can't handle the world anymore. It, it, <clears throat> it brings a lot of up in you. It makes you really look at how you behave toward that person and where you could have loved him more fully. And, and you, know, you come to the realization that you weren't paying very close attention because you didn't see how much pain they were in. They were right in front of you. And you kept being too busy dealing with your own story. So the point I'm leading to is I felt that I had healed that. I'd done a lot of work on that, a lot of mandala therapy, writing about it, talking inside myself, talking to his, connecting to his soul and just talking to him in his spirit body. Um, and I, in many plant medicine sessions, it came up very strongly and I would cry for hours and I would relive it with great intensity. And each time I would be shocked that that was still in there. Were I'm you like, scared to keep doing these? I feel like you, you would experience one of those and people would be like, I'm not doing that again. Yeah. Huh? You, you have to have spiritual courage. You okay. know, when you, God does not play games. Meaning when you, when you disable the ego with a medicine and you come, you have to work through yourself to get past yourself. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. To get to the rest of the world and the universe, you have to go through yourself first. And when I'm saying God doesn't play games, <clears throat> when, when you're on the medicines, there is no bullshitting. There is no lying. There is no pretending. You know, it, consciousness is consciousness. It's coming up unfiltered. The ego's de denial mechanisms are disabled by the medicine. You, you are... You are the emotion that you had. You are experiencing everything you've denied and repressed. And, you know, if you've lied to people you love, you experience that and you often experience them experiencing it and the pain behind it. So it's not, uh, this is not light going, you know, and, and if people are making it light going, they're either... Um, that sounds like they're, I mean, they're, 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 they're literally playing with fire. Yeah, they, they can be. And, and I can get into a whole lot. But, you know, what I'm saying is is that you, I, I, I've done many, many journeys. Like I've probably done over 400 shamanic or medicine journeys in my life, easily 400 uh, in over the course of many years now, probably 15 years. Um, and I have a very strong ego. You know, I used to race motocross. I was a boxer, kickboxer. You've got more testosterone than the three of us combined. In <laughs> well, no, the, here's the point I'm making is I've faced the devil lots of times i've been right close to dead i've had motorcycle racing accidents where i'm in got internal bleeding i've missed I, one time i missed a bridge doing over 70 miles an hour and skipped across river stones the size of this footrest here and am damn lucky to be here and i've had many damn luckies to be here completely unconscious for multiple days at a time from motocross racing accidents and and bad fights my brother was very brutal and he, he was dangerous brutal he had no rules he you know he cracked my head open twice once with a fire poker and the other time with a 44 magnum turned upside down he drove the hammer of the pistol right through my skull so he's split my skull open twice fighting and you you know it was very very intense so my point is my ego through my military training living with the father that I had and the brother that I had and the intense high-speed motocross racing and stock car racing and drag racing taught me how to stay fully present and, until I absolutely am forced to let go. Did you know you were, you were dropping into flow state back then? Did you? Oh, understand? yes. Oh, I had deep and powerful experiences. 
Oh my God, I've had experience. Did you connect it right away when you were having it early on? Well, or did you start to put it together over time? I, my mother took me in, into training in meditation when I was 12 with self-realization, self-realization fellowship monks and I went to summer camp. Oh, you were 12 them. when that happened. I remember oh, yeah. you mentioned, I didn't yeah, know you were 12. 12. And yeah. I went 15, I spent the summer with the monks. So I learned how to, to focus my mind and calm myself and, and use proper meditation techniques. So when I was like racing a stock car, I literally would reach a point where I was literally every stone on the track. I was every car front in front of me, behind me. I could feel the heartbeats of the drivers. I could practically look through their eyes. I was so tapped in. And I set um, three track records my rookie year. Wow. And, I, you know, I came from boxing and also, you know, for me, and, and I, I got a, just a natural ability to drive well. And mm. so a bunch of my buddies actually you think it's, you sponsored think it, my you think car. It's, you think it's driving well or actually maybe that training that you had that age to be able to tap into something so important to harness? Because getting into a, those death-defying type of sports, mm -hmm. you know, that you're talking about yeah. requires this s serious flow. And some, I think, athletes just kind of fall into it. They don't realize that a guy like you who's being taught it at 12 years old. Yeah, well, you know, one way to learn it is is this. You see, when you're moving fast in a race car or fast on a motocross bike or even in a boxing ring, it takes about 750 milliseconds. For example, have you noticed, have you ever played golf and knew you'd fucking hit a shitty shot before the club even hit the ball. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. there's nothing you could do about it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna because happen. it takes 750 milliseconds for the information to get from your arms and the club in your hand mm. to your brain, and then back down. process <laughs> it, and back down to the club. Well, it takes about 750 milliseconds to go from the top of the backswing to the ball and through the ball. So you see my point. You are already, by the time you figure it out halfway through, you're going to have hit the ball 350 milliseconds before your brain even knows what to do about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's the point. When you're racing balls fucking out on a motocross bike, doing like 65 miles an hour, flying through the air high enough to, you know, jump Caesar's fucking palace or something. <laughs> and you know, if you fuck this up, you're dead. Um, your concentration comes to a very, very focused point. But the point I'm making is, what, like, think about moving across whoop de doos that are very intense, right? <laughs> and you're just getting shit hammered out of you. Like, I used to ride in the rodeo, too. You, gotta, you can't think about, what am I going to do on this bull? You just hold the intention. Stay on top of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and so my point is this. You don't have time to think, so you have to learn to let go and use your intention to put you on the other side of the fire. You understand? Mm. You don't ride the bull right there. You're riding the bull right there, but the other part of you is already eight seconds past, mm. and, the, and the referee, the, the clown's coming to get you, you know? Or you're, I, when I'm racing a car, I'm not only looking at the car in front of me, I'm looking five or six cars ahead of me. And I have to process what everybody's doing because at 100 plus miles an hour, if the guy five cars ahead makes a mistake, by the time we see it and step on the brakes, we've already traveled so close to him, we're, we're, eating, we're kissing tailpipe. We're eating some ass, right? <laughs> and it's like, oh my God, you don't have time to say, oh, I think I need to slow down. It's like, sorry, dude, boom, you're gone. <laughs> Your car's ruined. <laughs> you might be gone. So you go into a state that's beyond thinking. And it's when, when you're fighting. I mean, I've been in the boxing ring with guys, no shit. I've been in the fucking boxing ring with world-class fighters that could hit me three times before I even realized I'd been hit by the first punch. And I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. Understandable. You know, I am a good fighter. I'm a white guy. <laughs> and I didn't start fighting till I was 12, but I'm in the army boxing team with guys who at 19 years of age have 320 sanctioned fights. Oh, shit. And they started when they were like seven and eight years old and they fought every weekend and traveled the United States and their parents bought motor homes and it was the whole life for them. Now, <laughs> I hate to say a lot of them are pretty brain dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're definitely slurred in their speech already, but... Here I am, a guy that grew up on Vancouver Island, gym fighting once a year. We might have had a tournament if we were lucky, but all the rest was gym wars. And I'm coming onto the Army boxing team with like eight amateur fights or something, and I'm fighting guys with 300 fights under their belt. So the one thing that I got is I'm a tough fucking country boy who's had fire pokers driven through his head and an old man that works him to <laughs> and death. And can tap into flow. And who doesn't like to lose and who is very committed to conditioning and whose motto is if you 
want to fucking beat me, I'm going to make you earn it, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and so what my style is just fucking work them to death. And when they can't hold their hands up, I would just, you know, hurt people, take the ribs out, take their brain out. And I was very good that way. But I got to the point where the fighters were so good it was a question, could I survive long enough to get them tired? <laughs> it's like, this is scary shit. These people hurt. I mean, I've been hit so damn hard in, in boxing matches as a welterweight that like one time my whole left arm was completely paralyzed. My left eye was going blind and I'm having a hard time breathing and this guy's like chasing me down like a gorilla, like a grizzly bear yeah. waiting to hit me again. And I'm like, oh my God. Unfortunately, I got an eight count. And so I composed myself i remember looking over at my best buddy ron wallstrom who's a wickedly good boxer and he goes like this which is our sign for wake up you're falling asleep and you're about to get your ass kicked that means get your shit together you're on your way out right now pull a magic out of your ass baby because you're in trouble <laughs> and so anyhow without boring you i've been hit by guys that are scary you like you, you realize i cannot play with this fucking dragon i either got to take this fucking guy out or i'm going to go to sleep in front of my mommy and my family and my company mm -hmm. commander and i'm going to be the village idiot so it brings you into this sense of um very primal very uh it's hard to put words to you there's something inside you that knows it's a life or death situation mm -hmm. you got to pull your shit together there's mm -hmm. no time to be afraid there's no time to make excuses get the job done or get out and um and when I'm racing a stock car or anything like that, you, you, you find most of the competitive sports like this are too fast for thinking. Mm. The point I'm leading to, this long way, forgive me, is this. The guys that think get hurt mm -hmm. to teach them how to stop thinking. Do you get to a predictive point where you yeah. stop thinking, but yeah. now you can actually see the patterns even before? So yes. you're just really in a full state of reaction. So here's the beauty what you get to is sal's feeling you cannot think you have to feel, feel. Mm. when i'm fighting someone i'm not trying to outthink them i'm feeling because if i feel my body knows what to do like i can throw a counter punch and not even know that i did it meaning i know i did it but i don't know how i did it mm -hmm. it's not like i sat there and said okay here comes one i'm gonna hit him and back. most most mm. like extreme athletes have experienced this multiple times yes you know? I, and, mean, I mean i've done things i'm nowhere near like yeah. an extreme extreme athlete but yeah. you do something you're like how did i land that yes where did that come like yeah. i don't even yeah. know how i did that you know you many could, many times racing motorcycles i i was ha things were happening so fast I don't even know how I did what I did. And, and it would amaze me. Or I would mm -hmm. see pictures of something that I, something I was flying through the air sideways and somehow landed mm -hmm. it and kept on going. And I thought for sure if that was anybody else, I said they're going to be fucking hurting when that ha hits the ground. Has, your, has your, your toughness, your ability to learn, your focus, the fact that you seem to be able to overcome whatever you decide to, has that ever become a, been a weakness for you? Or has it ever served you wrong? Yes, Mm -hmm. And how, how how does that serve you? Because well, I, I would I would feel like at some point you feel like right. well, I can do whatever I want. Superhero I'm invincible. Yeah, yeah. Like, no. Well, that's when you're in trouble. Yeah, mm. that's it. Um, but remember, the whole point of all this stuff was me telling you how I got through these medicine journeys. Yes. And I was saying because when you're doing the kinds of things I did to entertain the need to be a man, you know, fulfill that sure. desire. Uh, which, as you guys know, can be very strong, right? Mm -hmm. From sex to money to power to feeling safe. So making sure you Strength, can kick some ass, yeah. whatever you got to do. I sure. mean, me, why, why do you think that's built into us? Because we're the protectors. That's mm. our function. Our, you know, we, we, here's the deal. The woman has to carry the child for nine months and have it suck on her boob for two to three years, which is full-time work, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? We're wired to stand guard. We didn't come from fucking San Francisco, man. We came from where things eat your ass. <laughs> Bears want you too. You're yeah. you're a little creature out there. Yeah. So someone's got, and this is why men can have such laser focus. This is exactly why far more males have become enlightened than females, because to to reach to do the spiritual depth of work that you usually have to do to truly become enlightened and to realize yourself as one with all that is, you've got to stay focused. You got to, some of these guys sit in caves for years at a time. <laughs> don't move right or you have to be very 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 consistent in your spiritual practices and really work on opening your heart and getting out of your head i mean it's a full-time conscious practice how do you do that while well, you're wiping butts 
making meals, grinding corn, digging plants out of the ground, hoping your kid's not getting eaten by a bear, and daddy's, you know, got to be off hunting for there's something to eat to keep us going through the winter. So it's very, very hard for a woman, and, and a woman's brain has 30% more fibers between the two hemispheres. They're called commissarial fibers. So there's a woman, on average, has 30% more neurons or nerve fibers connecting left and right than you and I do. Yeah, their brains are hyperconnected. Their brains are wired for surround sound, mm-hmm. so they know where their kids are at intuitively without even having to look. That's why they say, oh, don't lie to your girlfriend. Yeah. You're, you're up against somebody who's got hardware yeah, you your, don't have. Your mom used to say, I have eyes in the back of my head. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, so, That's where those sayings come oh, from. Oh, man, there's truth in that. Huh? Yeah. yeah. So, so, But the point is, it works to protect the children, but it, when it comes to doing the spiritual practices that ultimately lead to enlightened realization, men are better wise for that Mm -hmm. because you've got to stay completely focused on that because a a lifetime isn't very long compared to how long it takes to remove all the programming from society Mm -hmm. and all the things that are in way in the way of realizing what you are so i've been able to go very deep on medicines and and many shaman have been completely shocked i've worked with lots of shaman i mean i'm taking like a full hit of dmt which is enough to mow a grizzly bear over and I'll be full in, but I'll actually start writing notes in my journal and drawing pictures while I'm in the medicine. And a lot of people are like, how the fuck can you do that? I'm like, that's not normal. And I say, well, let me tell you something, man. You get in a boxing ring with a good boxer, they'll hit you as hard as this fucking damn team. <laughs> Five times in three seconds. Five times in 1.5 seconds. No, I'm being facetious. I mean, nobody can hit you that hard and hit it hitting and, and being loved with that intensity or different things. But, um, do you, so, do you feel Sal, that you, you had, I'm sorry. I don't, oh, yeah, go ahead. I was, you had a question. I just wanted to finish my thought. Yeah. 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 It, I was going to say, basically, it, when does that ever hurt you? The, the, the oh, yes, knowing thank that, you. yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, because, you know, I'll tell you one of the things that I've had to, deal with um is that you know first of all i'm a country pumpkin as you know i only have a ninth grade education i'm pretty much educated myself right that doesn't mean i'm not educated just means i didn't do it standard way um but you can find yourself as a an example of spiritual pride um this is more than spiritual pride though it's more versatile than just spiritual pride you, you can find yourself achieving a high level of, of success. Like, obviously, I'm pretty well known for my work. And, you know, I pioneered a lot of very novel things that are used. Like, you know, every time you go into gym and see a Swiss ball, I, I was the father of that mm-hmm. concept. So, I've done a lot of things that, are, that give me confidence in my intelligence and confidence in my system of learning and knowing. But that also can bite me because... I can get frustrated with how um, people seem to be mentally lazy and very stupid. You know, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I mean, do you, how- think, it, do you think it's that though, Paul? Or do you think that you, you feel that way because you were driven so hard at such an early age, which was probably somewhat, I would think, rooted in some sort of an insecurity to push you to that level to learn and grow. And n- no one's going to yeah. ever even be able to catch you. So... Do you ever think that it was rooted in 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 the fact that my stepfather was an extremely dangerous man okay. who would put you in the hospital and point live guns at your head right. for so, not performing? So think about what that that turned you into a learning maniac. It did a, because you know. his rule was, "I'm giving you this job. When I come back, it better be done." And what that meant in a long sentence is, "I don't give a fuck if you have to steal from the neighbors." Um, get on the phone and call an automotive shop, whatever you do, I don't want any excuses. When I come back, it's done. So I learned, you know, knowledge is safety, right? As long as I knew how to fix whatever was going on or get the job done. Mm. And then as a young man who left school at an early age, I had to go out and compete with men for jobs in the men's workplace. And I was 16 years old, right? Um, So I had to work I, my father taught me to work really hard, but I always had the sense that I had to up my game so I could make more money and climb the ladder because I didn't want to be on the bottom. So I studied hard and I paid very close attention. 
And I went to trade schools. I, I got my uh, light journeyman's training for automotive uh, industrial repair. I did a lot of things as a young man. And I, you know, I built my own engines and my own cars. I built my own roll cages in my race cars. I, I mean, I, I worked. You got several patents, don't you? Yeah, I've got, yes, I've got three patents on, on original inventions. Um, but you, you see, when you... When you know what thinking is and what it does and how to use it, you can find yourself getting glorified because you're rewarded for that. But you can also find yourself having um, a lack of empathy, compassion, and patience for your students or others that you, you know, I won't name names, but there's certain people in the health and exercise industry when I see what they're selling or what they're promoting or even what they're using. I'm like looking at this going, come on, are you that, are you that shallow? Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll give you an example without, with this, no, no names involved in this, but this is, I'm talking, I'm going to talk about biohacking. Mm -hmm. Honestly, if you know what Dr. Diet is, Dr. Quiet is, Dr. Happiness, and Dr. Movement, which is exactly the four doctors that make it hard for me to be constantly on a phone and doing media stuff, mm -hmm. If you know what those things are and you actually engage and learn to have a relationship with those elements of your soul, do you really need to constantly be hacking yourself and trying to fucking figure out how to hyper adrenalize yourself or superfood this because you're tired all the time and your dick doesn't work or... Uh, give yourself some magic formula to make you think like Einstein. Well, look, anytime you have to tap into something that you got to plug into the fucking wall or buy in a bottle, you're not taking advantage of the fact that if anything you gain from that is possibly worth anything, you should be learning how your body responds and paying attention. For example, when I go into a deep meditative experience mm -hmm. on mushrooms and I'm connecting with nature spirits and seeing auras and feeling things, I'm not just going, wow, I'm going, okay, this is cool. This is possible. The, the psilocybin's just turned all these circuits on. So if I can do it now when the psilocybin's gone, I have the confidence that I have these abilities in me and by golly, I'm going to fucking practice. So I don't have to have the damn psilocybin just to see the rest of God because then I always have to wonder, is it the psilocybin or is it God, mm -hmm. right? So that's why I do my Tai Chi and my meditation and that's why I come out of a medicine journey with journals of notes going, okay, this is what you experienced. You know this is real. Now go there in the sauna, whatever, practice it. Don't, don't just be, so my point is that a lot of the whole biohacking thing is to try to compensate for imbalances that are created from not being conscious of the things that are the most fucking important for any person so, or relationship so, or profession so or sport. True. So it's true. not a holistic yeah, approach at all. Right. Well, we've been saying this since day one. It's just there's much bigger rocks to take care of before you start hacking into something or trying to take something. Yeah. Like, for example, I have all the athletes that I train and some of my patients, various reasons monitor their morning heart rate every day and record it and after seven days take an average and then i developed a scale of response that's a five beat five point system so if your heart rate's five beats above average do this if it's three beats mm. above average this is what this means based on me i developed this after studying heart mass research on heart rate variability and this is like you know in 2002 or whenever their book first you came, came up, up with this in 2002 yeah that's hilarious okay. you know why this is like, oh, like yeah, over no. the last three years yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah sorry yeah so what days. i did is i had athletes that i was coaching monitor this daily and keep track of it on a microsoft excel spreadsheet mm -hmm. And so, I know this for a fact because yeah, you've taught Mike. I've seen Mike. some of this. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen, I've seen him. He's very diligent with his yeah. work. And so and I've seen the work. So how I developed the system that I taught Mike is by tracking all these guys. And then I started looking at their Microsoft Excel spreadsheets. And I started noticing that within three days, if a person has an average heartbeat that goes five beats above their average. So if your average morning heart rate, this is resting in bed before you move, sure. was 55. And all of a sudden you wake one morning at 60, mm -hmm. that 
when I analyze my own data, almost every time within 72 hours, that person got sick or got some kind of an injury. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. Weightlifting injury, flu, virus, something fell out the bottom. So I saw that when monitoring average heart rate, that when it went up five beats, the body had hit a threshold at which it had to completely devote its energies to working on the inside to protect it from something or to get enough rest to recover so that it didn't run the risk of blood sugar handling wow. problems, restoration problems. Uh, and so wild. treat that like treat that like preventative. Like, okay, I just measured my pulse. It's five above average. I need to like rest. I need to meditate, yeah, that need sleep, means, drink lots of water. That means uh, yoga. Only whatever. do things that are restorative. Hmm. And and if you're feeling shitty, go lay down and pretend you're sick because you're going to be if you're not careful. So the point is, when I teach athletes how to do that, they're taking their own heartbeat. They're feeling their own heartbeat. They're listening to their own heartbeat. They're in connection with themselves. They're monitoring the data every day. They're correlating, wow, I'm one beat above. I feel pretty fucking good. I'm two beats. I still feel pretty good. I'm three beats. Hmm. Feeling, wow, the warm-up weight felt a little heavy. I'm four beats above. Wow, I'm questioning whether I should even be here. I'm five beats above. Fuck. The thought of going to the gym makes me tired. Paul's right. I need to go home or go jump in a jacuzzi somewhere, right? Here's the point. If you've got a fucking device you strapped on you that's telling you this shit all day and you're not taking your heart rate and you're not doing the numbers and you're not making the conscious connections and recording your reactions and looking at the data, looking at the feelings and looking at the response, then you got a smart goddamn wallet or a smart retaining it. You're not really learning, learning it. anything. Yeah. You now are codependent on another device. Like a lot of people couldn't fucking find their way home without a GPS, exactly. GPS. on an iPhone. Mm -hmm. And they can't read a normal clock because they've been looking at numbers <laughs> for their whole life. So they look at a circular analog clock and go, what the fuck does that mean? I forgot. Right? So the biohacking thing is a trap if you do not use that technology to create the exact kind of awareness that i've just talked about mm. and if you look at arthur young's stages of how consciousness grows it begins at loss of freedom so the soul in its unbound state is as expansive as space potentially it's got no location it's non-local coming into a body you have uh what's called the binding stage. So first is loss of freedom. Then when you're born, you begin to be bound and conditioned. Your parents tell you what to do. They inflict their ideas upon you. You're bound by your parents. So consciousness now, the genie is now trapped in the bottle and the parents paint themselves on it mm. and the family. Then you go into the stage called individuation, which means you now develop an ego and decide who you are and how much of mom and dad you're going to consciously keep or not. That's in, in Steiner's model that takes 21 years, but today there's people that live their whole life without ever really becoming an individual. In other mm. words, they're still worried about if mom knows they masturbated yeah. or smoked pot. Right. They haven't got any freedom from other people's ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next stage is called the choice stage. And the choice stage is all about realizing that there are no shortcuts to becoming a truly conscious human being. You have to do the work. There's no shortcuts to authentic knowledge and wisdom, right? Knowledge without experience is just a bunch of ideas. And a lot of people have a lot of ideas in their head, but they don't practice them or engage them. So you can't generate wisdom just from ideas. You have to put it into practice. And that's where you go through the threshing ground of the hero's journey. That's right. where it happens, mm -hmm. right there. Faith There's, without work is if dead. You're not, if you don't put it into practice, then you're not ever going to be a hero. I mean, how can you be a good martial artist just reading magazines and talking about it? You can't. You got to go get beat up a little. You can't learn how to race motocross just standing in a motocross shop and going, cool bike, man. You got to go get hurt. Yeah. Get wise. So um, there's times where I feel frustrated because there's so many scientists selling bullshit to people. I mean, almost every drug ever taken off the market was approved by scientists as safe, wasn't it? That's right. Okay. Yeah. Look at all the crap athletes do to themselves. Oh, it's scientifically this or scientifically that. You know, 
look at all the medical testing, mammograms, statin drugs. I mean, all this stuff. This is people that have the fucking smarts to, to build high technology, to, uh, you know, be a scientist, to, to know the difference between what the Bible says and what's probably really true by just asking a bigger question. These are people that should be smart enough to know that you, if you eat poisonous fucking chemicals, it can't be good for you or your kids. But they fund it and they research it and they publish often bogus research for a paycheck. And I ask these people, okay, so you're all, you know, like it's like doctors that are pro-vaccination. I'm like, doesn't it concern you at all that there's mercury in there? Doesn't it concern you all that there's aluminum in there? Doesn't it concern you that you're actually injecting a virus into somebody so there's a 100% chance they're going to get it and they're going to get poisoned? And the statistical likelihood of somebody getting that virus just walking around the street with a healthy immune system, eating real food, living for doctors is very low. And if you do get it, you'll build immune antibodies against it. Yes, there are some dangerous things that can really mess you up. But how often do you know anybody that dies from something sure. like that, right? Yeah. You got a better chance of getting hit by a fucking car or breaking your neck, racing your motocross bike or falling down your stairs when you're 65. Mm -hmm. yes. So people believe all this shit, but then you watch documentaries where these physicians own kids get autism and stuff from that and it turns them inside out. And for the first time, they started doubting authority and started doing research and realizing, oh my God, I've been sold a bill of lies the whole time and they're pissed. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, look, why didn't you just fucking ask that question? You're a medical doctor. Why didn't you simply say, why are we putting poison in here? Why do we want to poison someone to try to help them when there's other ways? We have high technology. We can develop all sorts of different chelating methods, binding methods. Right? We don't have to wait till everyone's sick to go, hmm, maybe there's another way. Maybe you see what I'm saying? Absolutely. So there's the, the hard part. I'm a logical, common sense dude. I'm like... I didn't fall for the stupid God trick in kindergarten, kindergarten, elementary school, Christian church either. I was eight and said, something's wrong here. I don't care if you're an adult or not. You're confused. It doesn't make sense to me. I'm eight. <laughs> right? Give me a break. I'm nervous to drive in the car with these people that can't fucking get that. But these are also the same people that are our medical doctors and our scientists and our planet's fucking dying and we're dying we're the sickest most diseased people we've ever been the earth has got more death on it more animal species dying recent research shows that insect traffic the sex organs of our planet has dropped 75 percent in the last 50 years and and the entomologists are saying Armageddon may be here at any moment. We're going to collapse the sex organs of nature and hardly anything's going to grow and reproduce food. And yet we're too busy chasing our fucking phones and buying a new BMW and talking about which boobs I'm going to buy and what supplements I got to take to make my dick stand up. Give me a fucking <laughs> break. You got your head up your fourth point of contact. You got it all backwards. You see, that's there it is. <laughs> I wanted to ask you something. There's can the we, ego can, and the yeah. there's the knowledge and there's me saying, why is the rest of God so fucking stupid? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm being honestly rude. I'm being, I'm sharing what's in my head. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to cover it up. Right. I'm not trying to be Mr. Spiritual Guy. I'm not trying to pretend to be somebody I'm not. I'm saying on the inside of me, it fucking upsets me. And it pisses me off because I'm not that smart. I've met lots of smart people. My wife's way smarter than me. I went to electronic school in the army with a guy named Brad Stockman who never studied and didn't have any more knowledge of electronics than I did coming in and could kick my ass on tests. And I studied my ass off and I wanted to beat the shit out of this guy. It's like it's not legal for you to be that smart. It came so easy for him. This guy could do math like it was me and you smoking a pipe. <laughs> I'm like, this is bullshit. This is hard work for me. It's stressful, too, to get high grades like that. It's against my natural nature to study all these heavy mathematical formulas, figure out circuit loads, capacitors. I mean, this is heavy shit. I repair weapon systems on Cobra helicopters, and I come from a fucking farm. You know? So my point is, I know what a smart person is, and when I see smart people out there not using their intelligence, and if I can figure it out as a guy who grew up squeezing tits on fucking cows and splitting firewood, then... 
What, what are people waiting for to wake mm. up and say, wait a minute, we've got real fucking problems on our hands here. Paul, I want to ask you something. And we, before we got on or earlier, we were talking about a, a mutual friend that we have now, um, our buddy Kyle Kingsbury. And you're just talking about uh, you love that guy and we equally love that guy. We consider him a friend of ours now. And I remember the first time that we all hung out together, you did a read on all of us. Yeah. And I love that. Oh, yeah. And so oh, I just wanted to talk to you about, um, you know, because I, I, I respect your opinion on that. I think you uh, you, you do. I th- and you think you articulate it really well when you talk about what you see when mm-hmm. you meet somebody. And since we have met you over two years now, you've been really kind of meeting a lot of people, more people in the fitness space. And I know you see a lot of the same things that we see. Mm-hmm. What, what are some of the, the people, what are some people that you really connect with and you, you feel and see the love like the Kyle that you explain and, and what are some examples of that and what do you like? About you know, it? I don't know the lady's name, but I just, <clears throat> I was on a panel last night with a girl who's a six-time Olympic skier, Olympic team skier oh. medal winner. No, 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 it's not her. That's not her. Who, it wasn't? She she's, was an Olympic competitor. She's 53, real pretty girl, real fit, but you know, just listening to her and her sharing her story and her philosophy on exercise i felt like i was with um Is it JJ real Virgin? feminine wisdom mm-hmm. real beautiful feminine wisdom who authentically cares about people and wants to uh help people not get caught in the traps that she did as a young athlete that didn't know any better just a lovely person mm-hmm. so there's an example um there's lots of my czech professionals you know my senior instructor uh who's sort of the chief of the instructors now in many ways is um matt uh matthew walden and he's unbelievably smart like this guy's you want to meet a genius this guy's got tremendous processing power and you know does stuff that blows my mind and takes my concepts and puts his own concept uh, structure to it and, and his own meditation on it and it comes out the other side and even I go, oh, wow, that's cool. I, I never thought of that. That's really good. Mm-hmm. And I have some some of my instructors that are very put together, very loving, very beautiful people. Uh, Nicole Devaney, she's, they're, they're all amazing, right? So there's people in my own camp that give me tremendous uh, soul medicine because it makes my life, the pain of my life, meaningful. Mm-hmm. And um, like I told you guys, when I – to stop for station yeah. identification yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back everybody thanks for waiting i i painted that painting for you guys because that was so it. awesome that was so awesome that. because i see you guys like a great big spotlight shining out into the world saying let's have a look at this <laughs> let's yeah. let's get to the bottom of this and because that's you're doing the same thing i'm doing you're following your bliss you're you're Heart is your compass. I don't see any of you coming to work going, God damn it, I got to go be with those fucking guys again today and just yeah. talk to all these morons. And how did I get in this fucking job? <laughs> right? Uh, you, 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 something's picking you up and carrying you to work, and that's your soul. Mm. And that's wow. what it means to live your dream. And that's the labor of love. And there's times when it's hard, and there's times when it's frustrating, there's times when it's expensive, there's times when it's scary, there's times when it's sad. And there might even come times when you guys just don't get along so well, just like the Beatles. <laughs> and you'll have a choice. Blame the other guy and say, fuck you and walk away and then forget, wish, wish you'd never done that because now you lost your tribe. Or say, time to grow up and see where we can get wiser together and learn to be empathetic and compassionate to what the want, feeling, or need is and, and be beautiful. So that, you know, when I... When I first worked with you guys, I really got the feeling and could see in my inner vision this great star of light that each of you is holding a quarter of. Your, like the, your whole team, really, you know? The, whole, the, the other guy that was there last time when I was visiting you guys filming, just I can see that you're like bees making honey together. And remember, no bee can make honey alone, hmm. right? Indeed. And so, for me, I feel like um, I'm sitting with people that are just as concerned and just as passionate and just as in love and just as afraid and just as blown away by the magic and the mystery and the awe of God and the sky at night and our beautiful children 
as a side note, that's another thing that scares the shit out of me. We got kids today that haven't got a clue what to do if the power goes out. They wouldn't know what a seed is from a poison is from a... They wouldn't know how to get themselves into the mountains. Most of them don't know how to swim, climb. I mean, we got people that a flight of stairs is pushing their heart rate to 220, right? Do you see? Do you see what's happening right now with like a Spartan race and these these events? I haven't we, watched much of that. So th these things are exploding right now. Paul. Yeah, good. And and that's what we say too. Is that we think that or we speculate that a lot of that is because. We need it so bad now that to because get because everything's so it's so comfortable, everything's so cushy and well, that's part of the. Remember, we I think we did talk about the need for a rite of passage, mm. right? It's in males and females. The females, it's built in because when they start menstruating, there's no question you're very a woman true. now, and you're you need to be very careful with your flower down there because if you get pregnant, it's going to cost mm. you the rest of your life. Mm. I've I've actually read mm. quite a bit about this. All cultures developed some type of a male. Yep. Right of passage. It's, yep. it's, a, it's just something that, because the females have one naturally and the man, you know, well, whether have, it's hunt or whether it's whatever. They have ceremonies for the women too. Mm. In fact, I, I just find it really interesting that we're seeing, we're seeing humanity. And that's why I always, I have, I have love, compassion, belief in humanity that we will, even as dark as and scary as it looks like we're going, yep. that w sooner or later we kind of wake up as a collective, right? That's the function of pain. R right. That's right. what I call the pain teacher. Pain is designed to trigger consciousness. Mm. Um, you, you oh, know, yeah. Nothing makes you more aware of what's happening right now than pain. Right. Yeah, no. Yeah, pain brings you into the moment. Mm -hmm. And um, pain also is direct feedback on the choices you've made. Uh, you, you, you can't lie about the results, right? Right. Mm-hmm. You can't tell me you're a good martial artist if you're a black belt and the white belt just kicked your ass, right? There's the pain and there's the reality. There's no denying it. So I call that the pain teacher and the pain teacher is always there to give us course correction so that we stay on the dreamline of the soul. Um, and there's the pain of becoming that person, but that's always supported by the love of knowing that we're moving in the right direction because it's the pain we're willing to engage in, right? Mm. We've all been in athletic lives and gone to the gym and pushed ourselves when a lot of other people simply would have stayed home and watched television and said, I'm too tired, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the pain was being propelled by our love of becoming whatever it was we were creating and we were committed to it enough to work through the pain. But we also knew that there's a very finite point at which more of that pain stops us from accomplishing the journey. And some people take longer to learn that, don't they? Mm -hmm. yep. And some people try to cheat the system. That's what I'm saying a lot of biohacking is, is cheating the system. Mm -hmm. um, but you're seeing a lot now, um, statistically speaking, depression, uh, anxiety, and suicide has actually gone up significantly among the youth. Yes. And we have the highest rates of teenage suicide and childhood suicide, actually in every category. In the history of man. It's, it's mm. uh, in recorded history, and it's uh, it, it's kind of scary, and yet we have more things easier to us and provided to us. And, you know, um, some some deep thinkers would say it's just we don't have we, – we're losing our sense of meaning. There's a, there's a sense of nihilism that seems to be spreading. Yeah. Maybe the worship of science and the disregarding of, you know uh, – the, the spiritual, spiritual side of it or the or yeah, yeah or the things that like wisdom ancient wisdom that isn't yeah. mm -hmm. that isn't that doesn't fit within the western scientific would you, know, you like a, a different perspective on that sure would you agree that energy and information are entangled realities yeah you understand my point I'll explain that a little bit energy say that again okay so if your body is getting too hot that's because there's too much energy moving through it, right? Okay, yeah. If you put too much energy through an electrical circuit, it'll overheat. If it doesn't have a fuse, it'll catch whatever it is on fire. Simple as that. As your body gets hotter, isn't there information attached to that that's very important for you to pay attention to? Yeah. That's why they have a thermometer they stick in your mouth, mm -hmm. right? And we all have a sense inside of ourselves. I've had heat exhaustion. So I knew that I was getting some very dangerous information when I started blacking out while I was in a triathlon and I was fading in and out, riding my bike as hard as I could go. And there was periods like, I don't know how many seconds long where I actually didn't even know I was on a bicycle. Oh, and I'm like, okay, the heat is a bit high here and I want to win, but I don't know if I want to die today, you know? So 
um, the point is information directs energy. God is pure, unadulterated energy. Consciousness directs energy. Got it? So if you're swinging a bat at a baseball and it's coming at you going 75 to 90 miles an hour, you have to read the ball and get the information. Is it spinning? Is it curving? You, there's always information attached to energy. Too hot, too cold, too fast, too slow. Sure. Um, this impulse at this frequency be, becomes decoded to be a recording somebody listens to, right? The energy and the information are two sides of the coin. So because what we are at, as, at the physical level, we are made of mineral substance, and cellular substance or organic matter, carbon, right? Your cells, you got 100 trillion cells, about over half of them are actually microorganisms and viruses and bacteria and fungi. But those organisms all developed in the milieu of the Earth's environment, correct? Sure. Okay. So out in nature, if the temperature of the water rises too hot, cells have to figure out a way to cool themselves down. If it gets too cold, they got to figure out how to survive. If a toxin comes into the area, be it injected by an animal that wants to kill them or, or eat them, they have to figure out how to defend themselves against it. So would you agree that information directs the flow of energy in the cell because it is something that has to read that which is consciousness? Okay, so every cell depends on gathering the information it needs for its own survival from the environment, and it depends on the environment for the very sources of its cells, food, water, air, right? Okay, good. So how long has it been since you would be out hunting for an animal to eat, and you would eat a living animal whose water would be impermeated with the entire electromagnetic spectrum of idea or information that contained that animal that made that animal you understand what i'm saying the idea of the animal if you eat any organ pretty much you've got peristalsis is woven into the software isn't it you understand it has to pump so you ever pull the lizard's tail off and it sits there and wiggles mm -hmm. okay that's the information that's in the lizard's tail and it has to eat the information that supports the structure of the lizard that allows its tail to wiggle. Simple enough, okay? I'm totally with Now you. <laughs> what happens if you start feeding that lizard enough white sugar? Hmm. At what point do you pull its tail off and it barely wiggles anymore? And it can barely even get away from you because it's not got the information. See, the sugar is energy, but it carries the wrong information. We got to get our wiggle, our jump, our run, our breathe, our bend, our wash, our swim, our fuck, our suck, our swallow. <laughs> My favorite. Our, our <laughs> sense of direction. Our wind has to come from everything outside of us. So what happens now when instead of an egg, you're getting something that looks like an egg that was raised in a building where a chicken never did anything but lay in its own shit for its entire life, its beak cut off, its wings are cut off, it's never exercised, it's full of antibiotics, it's full of chemicals, it's eating the cheapest goddamn food on the planet, it's poisoned with all sorts of vaccinations and steroids to make it f egg like a motherfucker, even though it's hurting it, it's in pain, and you're feeding that to your kids in school, and you're eating that, and you're trying to go to the gym and lift your fucking weights, and you can't figure out why your body's inflamed all the time and your knees are sore and your back's sore and your mind's fucked up and you're having depressive thoughts and you're anxious all the time and you forget that energy, once the information in that egg enters your body, the, it passes into the water of your body which communicates with itself at the speed of light. So you've actually downloaded that chicken's entire existence into you and what it doesn't have is information about wow. flight. What it doesn't have is information about eating insects. What it doesn't have is the nutrition from the insects. It doesn't have the athletic conditioning to make its proteins healthy. It doesn't have a capacity to detoxify itself. So all the information that you need that guides and directs your biological systems at every level from mineral all the way to the conscious ape 
comes in from our environment. But if you distort that information, so now the food, the carrot that would normally last a week on the shelf before it became limp and you'd want to throw it away or it might get a a mold on it. Now you go eat a carrot cupcake and the thing's designed to last in a bomb shelter for 10 fucking years because they killed all the enzymes and denatured the cell to the point that every cell which acts as an antenna for cosmic information, information, is now disabled. You can only break an antenna down before it won't attract the frequency, right? Mm. Think any antenna on the roof of your house. How many times you got to whack a piece of it off before all of a sudden there's nothing on your television? Because the structure of the antenna has everything to do with the frequency of the wave it tunes into. So does your cells. (laughs) So does your structure. That's what yoga is. It's a science of posturing your antenna so you pick up the frequencies that nourish the glands and the organs that are on that wavelength because you're in the posture that receives that fucking wavelength. And that's how you learn to be conscious at different levels of the chakra system because you learn how to tap into the frequencies of the information that is tied to the matter at that level. So glad I gave you another hit. Oh, my hit. God. So <laughs> glad I gave you another hit. That, that was the most amazing rant I've ever heard. Yeah. Right okay. Yes. But, this is, but this is my point. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying here? We have a problem because most of, remember, only 6% of the food eaten worldwide is organic. The rest of it's toxic poison shit. I won't even get started on how big a trouble we're in, but there's not, there's, it's hard to find a single body of water in the world anywhere, even down in deep holes in the ground that's not poisoned by industrial chemicals and nuclear waste, okay? We, we've got almost no, we've, by the year 1961, we had destroyed 60, see, what is it, like something like 61% of the farmable land in the U- United States. The average farming family destroys 7,000 acres of land in the life of that family of farmers, completely destroys it and turns it into a desert. Topsoil does not fucking happen overnight, and there's not a lot of it, and it's the digestive organs of this planet. So when you look at how much pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, rodenticides, and chemical fertilizers, and you see current research saying, there's, we have no more insects, guys. You did a really fucking good job. You actually <laughs> killed the whole fucking planet. Hallelujah. Oh and look how cheap the food is. <laughs> Soylent green, everybody. Oh, right? God. I saw that movie. You know, like I'm doing research for how to eat, move, and be healthy in like, you know, 2002. And I'm looking through food, trade food journals, right? And in there, I turned an award for Lord Sainsbury of London. He set the record. He sold $13 billion of synthetic food in England and Europe. And he's getting an award from the food industry. I'm like, you fucking kidding me? He sold $13,000 of plastic and called it fucking food. Synthetic food is not fucking food. I hate to tell you. I can do, We don't even have time to get into the science of that. Mm. But it ain't just like a synthetic hormone. It's not a hormone. It'll fuck you up. Um, I think the pro- part of the problem is is that you can get away with some of the stuff for a very short period of time. So people think, oh, it's fine. Mm. You know, my kids can eat this food over here. They don't need to move that much. They can be on their iPhones all day long. They don't need to develop the relationships or whatever. And it seems okay because in the short period of a day, a week, a couple months, it doesn't seem like everything's okay. And then it starts to become the norm. But you don't see what's happening generationally. And I think that's why it takes us so long to learn our lesson. You right, know? Well, here's the thing, though. If you need, let me give you an example. If you're not getting enough protein to meet your metabolic and hormonal needs to keep your body capable of maintaining the three critical or primary hormones you have to have or you'll die, which is adrenaline, insulin, and cortisol. If you're say, say you say, oh, I'm going to become a vegan today, like a lot of people do, mm-hmm. or you become a Rastafarian or a Seventh-day Adventist or a Buddhist who sure. thinks or a Steiner follower, whatever, but you're Sal, you're Adam, and you're Justin, right? You, Just say the you, other guy. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say it wrong? No, you didn't. No, I, I, no, I, I called myself remember, the other guy. I'm Justin. We had it on yeah. his name tag. I had on a name had, tag. Uh, the other guy. Oh, on his, yeah, 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 right, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Okay. You guys on a vegetarian diet, and you are going to fucking shrink. How do I know I did it? I did it for a fucking year, committed. I had to test the theory. I don't want to just talk about vegetarianism like I know my shit. My mother made me a vegetarian when I was 13. It made me sick in six months. I got anemic. The naturopathic physician said, feed him meat. That's all that's wrong with him. So I tried again. 
I really wanted to see, and my soul guided me to it. My soul said, and I, I did a lot of deep spiritual practices and it helped me a lot with connecting to, shall we say, higher mind or a soul or getting still, or it was kind of like a really comprehensive detox. But I lost 26 pounds of muscle, and I got to the point where no matter how hard I train, I could not put muscle mass on, and I know how to train. I'm a skilled athlete and a skilled conditioning coach. And my, I was starving for protein. So the point that I'm making here, <clears throat> you can be eating all the food you want and all that fancy stuff, but when it gets to the point where what you're eating, no matter how good it tastes or what the cost of it is or isn't, if you're not getting the resources you need, for example, if you're not getting enough protein, your body will go into gluconeogenesis and you will start eating yourself. Hmm. Now, this is why I tell the vegetarians, look, you're all about not being mean to animals, but what about being abusive to yourself your body needs the same level of love or more that you give your dog and that cow over there so would you starve the fucking cow of grass if you thought the opposite and that the cow should be eating meat and not grass if you just flip the tables and said well mm. let's do it backwards if you starve the cow of grass and only <laughs> feed it meat how long is it before your cow is sick and hit. won't make oh. any milk anymore well not very fucking long so why do you think it's so cool for you to abuse yourself in the name of an idea that you haven't studied enough and n learned enough about how nature works to realize that you're just like a kid telling mommy you know how to drive a car better than her so do you see the point i'm making is that the further we go down this road, the more disconnected we get from the information that informs the unconscious biological processes that create and sustain the body that the person we think we are lives in and that our soul uses as a vehicle of live simulation of a thing called life, which is a simulation in the absolute. It is the relative experience of now and the soul is living in your body as the consciousness that's aware that it's having this experience. So he's a fan of science. <laughs> well, you know, it's... Uh, I'm not against science. I'm just no. against the abuse of science. Yes, because yeah. this, this, no, is, no. this is classic human behavior. Mm -hmm. We take something that is powerful and we don't realize that Power also means responsibility. And yeah. it doesn't matter. The first time we use fire, I guarantee we burn the shit out of oh, something hell or someone. Yeah. We do this with any nuclear power. It's, mm. you know, look at science. Mm. Science is an incredibly valuable tool to test nature, to set you know, hypotheses, to test yep. them, to find out how things work, to learn things in depth. But it's, it's a powerful tool and it can be abused like anything. And, and I feel like right now we are in the midst of a, a worship well, We're worshiping of, technology. We're worshiping sure. science, scientism. Yeah. yeah. And in... in Nobody's asking if we should. People are only asking, can we? Well, right. here's the problem. A moral is a code of conduct that is designed to protect life. An ethic is just a code of conduct. When I was a paratrooper, I had a soldier's manual, which was my ethics manual. that said, if this guy's wearing this uniform or a tank or an aircraft that looks like this, kill it. If it looks like this, do not kill, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Uh, this is how you kill. This is how you don't kill. This is what is legal in a battlefield. This is what is illegal, sure. right? You can't torture people, whatever. So um, right now we've got a situation where science has detached itself from the issues of morality. For example, they make microwave ovens and even know now in almost every hospital anywhere it says right on microwave ovens and hospitals, do, danger, do not microwave milk for babies. Why? Because it kills them. Okay, so wait a minute. If a microwave oven damages milk so bad, it'll put a baby into fucking anaphylactic shock and kill the damn thing, then why would you want to feed it to anybody since they're all living human bodies? One is just brand new and the other, the same enzyme system, like it's just a fragile body. But you see, this is stupid. So my point is, if, if, without going in a long dissertation, if you look at the research and the studies done on what microwave ovens does to food, it causes a huge white cell population increase, which is an immune reaction. And your body does not recognize it as food. It recognizes it, recognize it as an offender. It is not information compatible with your body once a microwave has oscillated the polarity 6 billion times a second. And, you know, just look what it does to an egg. I'm like, come on. You put an egg in a fucking microwave and take it out and feel the texture of it and taste it and say, now, is that like an egg or is that something from another fucking planet? Mm. It's not even like an egg anymore. And most foods are weird. I'm like, don't you pay attention to this? Um, 
It almost seems so obvious, right, when you look at it like that. Well, it is kind mm-hmm. of obvious. That's what I'm saying. When people get too detached well, you, from paying well, attention to what's essential to survive, they're now too far above nature. Our problem is, is that our consciousness has risen into mind without realizing that mind can only be enjoyed when you embody it. And that's the definition of mind by Dan Siegel. Mind as is an embodied and relational process that regulates the flow of energy and information. Mind is an embodied and relational process that regulates the flow of energy and information. But if you take the embodied out of it, what do you got? Make signal. <laughs> what you got is zero, Nothing. Yeah. giving you all possibilities until you figure out how to make another body again. <laughs> and since you can't remember how you did it the first time, you have a 50-50 chance of your next one. <laughs> it's like, I don't know how I got here, but I hope I can get back. <laughs> or I don't, I don't know how I got here, but I'd like to figure out how to get out of here. <laughs> There's two ways to do it. One way, you may not have to ever come back because you're conscious enough to choose from the vast expanse of all possibilities. But if you're unconscious and you think God's going to burn you in hell, well, you're probably going to have to live in your mind until you figure it out. Now, Paul, how do you tell, you tell somebody, right, after you say something like that, which I think was such a powerful statement, but I can't help but think like all the people going through their head like, oh shit, I microwave my food every fucking day right now. Yeah. How, and, but yet, and they have a lot of other things that they need to really fix in their life. Their, st- their stress, their love their relationship. Their sleep is terrible. Their, yeah, yeah, their sleep is terrible. All these other things. And they're also microwaving food. How yeah. do you teach somebody at that point in their lives? Like, what are, what are the big rocks that they address before they start freaking out about that? Well, you ready for this? Yeah. How'd this conversation start out today? Talking to Paul about how do you feel about all this social media and <laughs> what do you got to do to do it? And boy, you're sure blown up. And what's it costing you time-wise? And I said, I got to live for fucking doctors. And now you're talking to me about someone saying, I'm having a hard time not using my microwave. And I'm saying to you, what's the point of a fucking microwave? The whole point is that it's supposed to cook your food faster so you can get more done in a day or spend <laughs> less time cooking. And I'm saying faster is not always smarter. In fact, faster might kill you. <laughs> so... You Slow have down. you ever wondered? I mean, look at the fucking internet. Look at guys like me and, and and people that are trying to get a message out. Have you noticed that the attention span is getting shorter and shorter and shorter? Oh my yeah. Okay, so I have a question. Mm. Where's that arrow flying to? When's it gonna stop? Mm. Well, what are we gonna get to? I can only handle a three second discussion. You see the point yeah, I'm making? Right, right. Where is do you hit the bottom? And remember. As you get less and less time, if you watch frames per second, people have to start doing very flashy editing to pump your head with yep. a message that comes yep. in so fast, you don't even know what you got hit with. So the question now is, are you being programmed and acting unconsciously because you don't realize you've just had a mind, lo- a mind virus downloaded at a speed that you can't consciously pick up, just like you didn't know you were going to miss that fucking golf ball when you were swinging the club? And people forget light has an almost infinite capacity to carry information and they never sit and meditate on, hmm, I wonder how fucking much technology went into getting me addicted to looking at this phone all day and looking Mm -hmm. at YouTube and all these other things and forcing me to watch fucking commercials and wondering what the technology says about how much you can download per second through light picked up by the eyes. I tell you right now, it fucking shocked the piss out of you if you knew how powerful these phones were. And then you ask about all the hours being spent on video games and you ask about what does it fucking do to a kid's mind when he actually thinks you can just spray people with machine gun bullets and they'll just pop back up and everything's hunky-dory and then he's on antidepressant fucking drugs because he eats farm raised uh, commercially raised eggs and microwave food and the next thing you know he's at a fucking shopping mall with a machine gun acting out the video game unconsciously not realizing that that's fucking make believe this is real the Mm. dividing line starts to get very fuzzy Mm. just like some cops can't tell when not to kill and when to kill because they think screw the justice system i think this guy is guilty i'm going to kill the motherfucker Mm. do you see any of the positives like with this long form communication with podcasts and with people now having access to information they may never have heard of like uh, they wouldn't have heard of you uh sometimes without um, somebody voicing your message and on this platform. Yeah, but the that's a good question. So I would say um, 
what's the difference in your mind between somebody that can't stand watching something that's less than a few minutes long and someone that'll listen to an hour and a half of us talking? Mm -hmm. It's a big difference. You're different bandwidth. Mm -hmm. You're, you, you know, you're talking about a commercially raised chicken mm -hmm. versus somebody who's really interested in learning how to live better. That's the difference. So mm. you could say we're on the green, the heart frequency. We're already on the growth path. We're That's on the integration path, right? Everything you guys are talking, everything I've ever heard you talk about has something to do with integrating or enhancing your life in some way and looking at the spiritual, looking at the physical, or I wouldn't even be sitting here. But these are people down here that, you know, haven't you ever watched commercials on television and said, honestly, who the fuck would watch that? And worse, who would buy that? Mm -hmm. here's this drug Enough people for them to spend money on a yeah. commercial here's this exactly like which yep. is a lot of money like here's a pill to get rid of your acne mm -hmm. but if you have two eyes a heart or lungs it could cause suicidal thinking if you have a dick it may fall off if you have a vagina oh it'll probably end up being a rat's nest you know you listen to the symptoms of something that's I still like, haven't read those ones but I, I believe as that as simple though. as a, a pimples or people saying oh if your cortisol is high take this drug and it'll lower your cortisol for you i'm like give me a fucking break why do you think the cortisol is high there's a reason it's high yeah you just yeah. like that's like saying oh the temperature is running too high on my car someone put some tape on the fucking temperature gauge so i don't have to yeah. look at that no i i you know with with my kids and technology because i see technology is extremely powerful it's a it's a wonderful powerful tool but like all things powerful it can do amazing good things and it could do incredibly terrible things. Mm -hmm. And just like, look, you know, I, I call, I've called technology today's, you know, it's like processed food from when we were kids. Like yeah. today, people are more aware of, of heavily processed food, not as aware as it could be, mm -hmm. but more than when I was a kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Today, technology is like processed food was when I was a kid. We parents are just, they don't realize it. They let, they let their kids stay on the iPad all day long. And yeah. shit, they're not encouraging doing, it because it's now becoming yeah, a babysitter. And, and my yeah. kids, my kids, I, you know, I am very structured with it and this is yep. what it's for this is what you use it for and this is how much time you have and i've noticed tremendous uh, benefits to their there personality is. their connection mine too i got a two-year-old he's yeah. a, look the guy's a ipad wizard at two he does it with his feet to show off for daddy and mommy wow <laughs> and but the thing is there's nothing on that ipad that i wouldn't want him to see right and mm -hmm. so you know what the common denominator is in this conversation right now parents with enough awareness that's right mm. to know how to Absolutely. use the technology because a surgeon's scalpel can save your life or it can end your life and it all depends on the wisdom of the person holding it mm -mm. and uh. an ipad can save your life or end your life <laughs> so can your phone <laughs> that's right <laughs> Right. That's absolutely right. Absolutely right. <laughs> you can you can believe a lot of very dangerous shit with a phone or an iPad or a television. And remember, the word television means tell a vision. Oh, and shit. we do it through light so you can't defend yourself on it. And we program you with it. And the next thing you know, you're wow. sitting there feeling like shit in the doctor's office going, why did I spend all that money on that car? Why did I marry somebody that I wasn't even attracted to? And you're, the list starts to get very long. And you realize all your life you've been told a vision, but you never took time to make your own. <laughs> oh, my God. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and so now you know what the word make believe really means <laughs> <laughs> make it believe yeah. holy shit <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you know, oh, all right what well, so uh, one one more question this i can i can talk to you for hours i know. swear to god one Let's more keep this going when last time we talked with you we talked about business and you said that's the harder part of what you do is the business side yes. of it yep. and at the time you know it, it seemed like you were looking for new ways to try to grow your business yep. and now you're all over the place. Has your business, I'm sure your business has is, is yes, definitely and, and reaped some of the benefits of this. That guy right there mm -hmm. is one of the main reasons because he, Mike Salemi, out of the goodness and love of his heart, felt some love for Papa Paul and <laughs> said, okay, I can see the Institute struggling. It's not getting enough students in. You know, it's an expensive organization to run. And, I've been talking to Mike and talking to him about various things. And so he, he says, um, we were, my wife and him and I were talking, we, we need a really skilled video guy that can make it look exciting because mm -hmm. people think my stuff's old and outdated and they think I'm old and outdated. They think I'm dead, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's 100% alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so Mike introduced me to Eli. And uh, then we, my wife and I, um, 
we changed our arrangement with our arrangement with our European and UK distributor, who's beautiful. His uh, wife Gabby and him Gavin are they are used. Gavin used to be one of my students, but he's got a background in sales and marketing. He's very good at it, and he built up the European branch to be as big as the US branch from nothing. Excellent. And so. Penny and I both being tired and needing some fresh eyes on the project. And, you know, sometimes you can't edit your own article, right? Oh, so, yeah. And I like I don't like to do all the too much of this phone stuff. And I, so I need some Eli's in there to make it easy for me. And, and so Gavin took over the direction of the business and the marketing and the strategy. Gabby took over the accounting. And we got Eli involved with Gavin and me together collaborating on how to make things and Eli's creative genius. And Eli says, okay, I'm going to come spend a day with you. Do a bunch of stuff that you think might be fun to people or shoot this video Gavin wants and James wants and Penny wants for this project. And then he makes it all very beautiful. Gavin has the science of getting it to people at the right time and in the right way. And then people like Aubrey Marcus, Kyle Kingsbury, you, Ben Greenfield have all realize that what I'm doing is interesting enough to talk about and share and that causes the volume to go up and the awareness to go up and you know so people are now see I used to live on airplanes going conference to conference and I was in front of thousands of people each year but when I stopped doing that our sales dropped down of course but I could not pick myself up to go do that again I said to Penny if I have to shut the business down to balance myself and heal, I'd rather go broke than have to burn myself out and get cancer trying to teach people how to have health. Mm -hmm. So I needed that downtime and I went through a very significant midlife crisis at 50 because I knew I could not be authentic on stage anymore. I was too tired. And so I had to stop doing what was keeping the Institute growing and thriving to survive. And my wife, even though she's tougher than me, needed to slow down too. So it took me a few years and in the time I was recovering and healing and working through my own crisis about my own future and how I wanted to handle it. Do I want to sell the Institute? Did I want to you know, start a pot farm? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Something a little less stressful? <laughs> Did I, whatever. That would be awesome. You know, but um, <clears throat> it's not an impossibility. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, not these days. So anyhow, it took me a few years to, to work through all this, but in the last couple of years, and then Eli came on uh, and supported us, and um, we started teaming so that Gavin's engineering of the marketing and the management of all that and the use of um, Eli's creative genius to make to put the right contents together in a way that's appealing and sexy and attractive – um, that's what seems to have got the Institute breathing again. And it's very exciting for me because this is the first time in a long time that I'm relaxed inside about how hard I'm going to have to work tomorrow to figure out how to pull 20 grand out of my ass in the next X number of days to make payroll. And it gets tiring to sure. have to be that mm -hmm. rabbit. You know, you're like that chicken that's laying too many eggs <laughs> and it hurts after a while. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm really in trouble now because it takes me as many hours of Tai Chi and meditation to figure out how to solve my problem as it does to deal with it in the real world of working on it, right? So if it goes any further, I'm going to have to meditate so much the business will disappear. Yeah, isn't, that the, isn't that the struggle that everybody's having every yes, day, right? That's the, that's the tipping point. So right. that's Arthur Young's choice point. Remember I told you loss of freedom, binding, centering, choice. Unbinding, decentering, total freedom. Well, only um, about two percent of the world population get to the decentering or the integral stage. Because to be truly integral, you have to decenter yourself. I got to be willing to take your opinion and look at it as honestly as I would look at my own. <clears throat> you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I have to decenter. If your ego, your egos, you could call it your I, your I, the, not just the ego, but the I. You know what I mean? The self. Mm -hmm. That's the center of your sense of yourself. So if you're too anchored in your eye, such as a um, 
somebody in the traditional level of psychological development, which is all your orthodox religious concepts, right? They're sure they're right. <laughs> if Jesus ain't, if, if you don't take Jesus as your savior, we have to exterminate you. But, at the, but in the next breath, God is everything. Hmm. <laughs> you see that? So the processing power is not very high yet. So we have to actually decenter our ego and expand it out to include your opinion and be brave enough to, to ask, am I willing to be wrong? Am I brave enough to be wrong and say, okay, Sal was right. It, you know, it is safer his way or it is better his way. But if the ego uh, is too in need of trying to establish control often to prove to somebody else that it's smarter, which is another need for love and approval, um, do you see how it won't, won't decenter itself to actually take your opinion so you get somebody who, for example, um, is willing to be abusive to gay people without realizing he's repressing his own sexual mm -hmm. reality, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, so it's... Well, anger, hate, all that stuff is always a reflection of yourself, right? Yeah. Always. Well, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm happy to see that your your business is growing. I'm happy oh, to yeah. see that the, the, the message that you have been sharing for so long now is, you know, it's getting cool, which is good, which yeah. is good because more and more people are going to seek it out. I've had more trainers, you know, if, two years ago, if somebody, you know, if I mentioned your certification mm -hmm. to a lot of people who, and they weren't in the know, they'd be like, well, I've never, I've never heard of that. I'm going to go get yeah. NASM. I'm going to, now people are asking me quite a bit now. And NASM and who consulted me <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> to build it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it, you know, and now people are asking about your, your courses and uh, it's the most, uh, I think, complete, comprehensive course I've seen. If you're trying to be a, a really good trainer or really mm -hmm. good coach mm -hmm. or really good mm -hmm. wellness uh, you know yeah. expert it's beyond a trainer i mean you know like like and that's what i mean it's like a when holistic i holistic health practitioner yes yes mm -hmm. you know but when i use the term i use the term in the way we like to try to use yeah, the term yeah. which is exercise professional you're, you're not just that but you you're you're working with everything you're yes. working with total health total hey. wellness Look. which we've been trying to separate which the industry has been trying to separate for on us mm -hmm. and everybody like put That's everybody right. in these little boxes for to to master exercise you have to master the concept of understanding how stress works don't you a hundred percent isn't mm -hmm. ex the science of exercise is the scientific application of different types of stress hundred percent right so if you don't know what dose. else plays into the total True. equation True. called True. stress in the body how do you ever know how much is a therapeutic dose of exercise for any problem <laughs> you don't you're yeah. guessing it, and that's yeah. why the whole Beautifully no pain put, uh, no yeah. gain concept is a sign of really a lack of intelligence right because what that concept says is leave your divorce or your sick child or your broken heart at the front door of the fucking gym and come in here and perform like there's nothing else going on in your life, like you're eating perfect, like you're sleeping perfect, and you're getting laid and you're a happy motherfucker, when really the skeletons walk in the gym with you. And if in those skeletons and those emotional pains change day to day, almost hour to hour, you're in the middle of a workout, someone calls you and tells you your, your mother's dying. Well, you try to finish that workout, you might blow L5S1 out or rip your rotator cuff or something because you now are in a state of shock and all your energy is being directed completely elsewhere, not into where it should be. And the list is very long. So I, I, you asked me how I, what did I do to, to learn such a breadth of information? I did, committed myself to studying everything I could possibly learn that I had to calculate into the factor of how to make the right decisions with diet, sleep, exercise and effective and you ended up mind. learning everything because you have you have to because <laughs> it's all book well that, it yeah. all contributes around, yeah. that's yeah. my point yeah you have to you have to really look at stars to soil um light to matter uh i mean emotion religion thinking, everything. emotion yeah you got to study everything. the psyche you got to study all aspects of the psyche and the physical because we are a psycho physical being mm -hmm. right the mm -hmm. psyche is the bridge between the invisible and the visible yeah the, the more you learn the more you realize you don't there's the more you realize that there's a lot more you don't know and, oh. and the deeper you go the more you realize that. so this goes back to where i kind of got lost in one of our conversations in the beginning which is I was about to say, you were asking me about the breath and I was saying there's two paths to enlightenment. One is called the negativa, the other is called the positiva. So people like Chang Tzu, Lao Tzu, they took the path of the negativa. The, ne 
the negativa is to minimize what goes into your head, to keep only in your mind what's absolutely necessary to do the things that are necessary for you to carry out your process and your practice. In other words, don't watch TV you don't need to watch. Don't chase after money you don't need so that you can be present with what really is. And that leads to the masters going into caves and eating only enough to stay alive and spending their time in deep meditative practices and chanting and doing the things like you see the Buddhist monks do, the Dalai Lama, and, and, right. and focusing on what's really there. Why? Because their souls have evolved to the level where they're ready to complete their journey and become one with what they really are. So that's the path, not the Buddhist. The Buddhist is, is different. But, mm -hmm. but like I say, someone like Cheng Su, some, some of the yogis, in other words, they minimize mental activity to the point that there's nothing going through their head, getting in their way of their awareness, going to everything that is. Right. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. In other words, if you're too busy in the dance, you can never really know what it's like to be the dance floor, can you? Right. Right? right. So they go for the dance floor. The path of the positiva is to gain enough legitimate awareness or knowledge of the key things that make life and the universe work so that you think of it as a puzzle board, right? If you called God a puzzle, let's call it a circular puzzle because God would be a circle. God is a point whose center is everywhere and a circle whose circumference is nowhere. Can you visualize that? <laughs> Everywhere and nowhere at the same yeah, time yes. are expansive. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you visualize this circle, but it starts off completely empty because remember, we don't know what God is yet. We don't really know what we are. So you study gemology and you find out, okay, gems, gems are part of the planet. Where do planets come from? The planets come from stars. Okay, so we can actually look into what's in our sun and compare it with the mineral elements and the metallic elements in the earth. And we find out, wow, some of them came from the sun, but some of them come from somewhere else. So then we say, okay, well, these came from that star. Or we look in the sun and say, where did those elements come from? Well, the point is, is if you do that, and I've done this, I've studied this, what you find out is the astronomers and the, and the um, physicists come to this conclusion every star is made of every other star <laughs> and every planet is made of every other planet and everything in the universe is made out of every other part of the universe just like a flower looks like a flower but it's actually made of earth water warmth air soil but it takes the shape of a flower and you don't even think of it as the air or the water, but it couldn't be there without the water and that water's constantly coming and going. So you see, there's the dance again, right? So the path of the positiva is you keep studying and asking what causes that to happen or allows that to happen. And then you say, well, to really understand that flower, I've got to study, understand water. What does water really do? Then you find out that water has an almost infinite capacity for information. Just like light, it carries the frequencies in our body that we feel predominantly as emotion. And you, you realize that without water, there's no neurological connection in the body. Your fascia wouldn't work. I mean, <laughs> you're kind of like, water's cool. How did it get here? And why is it only here? Fuck, it's not very many planets. It's, it's, you don't just find water floating around everywhere. It's not like go grab, jump on a spaceship and go grab me a truckload of water. There's, so there's magic just in the fact that it's here. And you say, okay, well, how does that happen? And you see what's happening. So then you say, well, why, does, why is our sun- The deepest rabbit hole of all time. Yeah, right. why, is yeah. Our, why is our sun at exactly the right temperature not to overheat or freeze the planet? Mm -hmm. And what's mm -hmm. the chances of that? Well, the chances are like one in a thousand fucking zeros that if it changed more than just a tiny little bit, we'd all die. And it's been that way for billions of fucking years. It's like, okay, hmm, someone thought that out. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that, that's yeah. like beyond thinking. That's more zeros than you can add up in your whole lifetime. So someone's got it down to a perfect fucking science here. And it's the science is called nature and the science is called the creativity of the mind of God. And, you know, the watch can never figure out its maker. Isn't that a fact? <laughs> yeah. Yes. We're the watch. But as St. Francis of Assisi said to people who asked him, what is God? He would say, what you are looking for is what's looking. <laughs> yes, indeed. And that's what God is. Excellent. So now that you've met God, 
<laughs> and you realize what it takes to keep God looking at God, which is the function of love, we realize that we can only do with so many microwave ovens and so many iPhones <laughs> before we end up uh, being behind the lens looking for another body, but going, okay, where do we go now? <laughs> <laughs> we killed that planet. Well, <laughs> we, I, we need another home. <laughs> I, I believe I believe the message is getting out there. I, I know we see things increasing and getting worse, but when I see things like these Spartan races and stuff happening, I, I feel that that's, that's human searching. Yeah. They don't they don't know for sure yet what they're searching for. Well, they, uh, they just know it, it makes them feel a certain way that mm-hmm. they know is important. It brings you back in touch with nature, doesn't right, it? Right. It gets your feet back on the earth. And let me ask you a question. If Mother Earth is the mother of the children of the Earth, which is us, and she knows that there is some real changes in the environment coming towards us, if she was going to send a message to her children as to what to train for and what to get ready for and where to go to practice, how much different would that be than training and doing Spartan races? (laughs) You get it? Right. So the unconscious... uh, uh, The unconscious, not necessarily an apocalypse, but a changing environment, like mm. rising tides, like massive storms, mm. like potentially tidal waves, yeah. like earthquakes. Oh, mm-hmm. Like swinging the pendulum mm-hmm. back the other way. Like uh, an early onset of a greenhouse effect that Donald Trump says we're not doing as he drills more coal and oil and acts like a complete, lovely, confused Christian and a few other things. Um <laughs> That was way too and nice. I, you know, don't get me wrong. I love all religions because all religions are systems designed to protect you from the direct experience of God. That's exactly what Jung taught, and it's true. Um, religions are fields of resistance that force the mind to get programmed, so that it actually has to build the strength of awareness and learn how to meet the resistance of developing the mind, so that it can come to the point where it can actually comprehend itself. For example, what would it, what would it be like if you took the average twelve year old and uh, gave him two or three hits of clinical grade LSD or a hit of DMT? Sure, it would completely fry their mind. It'd be terrible. Yeah. They wouldn't. They, they there's not enough integrity of their neural network and their sense of self to be able to maintain the thrust of that much water. Imagine if Laird Hamilton got hit by a hundred and fifty foot wave he would have a better chance than all of us of surviving because he has a neural network that's used to that much force and power and has an understanding of the process that's about to happen. So if the LSD is as strong as that wave and you give it to someone who doesn't have the strength of self-development to realize that they're on a journey, that they'll be okay, that it's a drug, that it's a process, that it'll come to an end and just relax and let the wave carry you, do you see they could go literally into a state of complete psychopathy? complete literal meltdown which is probably why some people have horrible experiences with some of these things that's why a lot of people become schizophrenic when they do too high a doses because it breaks their ego structure down to the point they can't tell what was real the experience they're still trapped in or the one that they're trying to get to Mm -hmm. so they're it's like as though if the mind was a mirror it's like if that television was a mirror and you threw a stone at it that would be the impact of the lsd but when the drug wears off, the glass is still broken and you can't figure out who you are, what end mm. is up. Mm. This I've had to help many people who did silly things with psychedelics and went to the jungle trying to follow the big fad of doing ayahuasca and, and really got way too deep for their own good. Mm. And it can take people years or a lifetime to recover even with skilled help. Wow. So, you know, I think... Um, It's an interesting state we're in, but Carl Jung said no being is truly truly alive until it has the power to kill itself. And I think that we're going through a quickening. We're coming to the point where, yeah, we're coming to the point where we we have to make careful decisions about how we use technology, especially military technology, because we now have a level of destructive power that far outruns our spiritual intelligence and our moral principles. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's why I said a moral is a code of conduct designed to protect life, but science prides itself in not getting caught up in morality. It makes microwave ovens and says it's up to you moralists to figure out how to use them. But we will happily sell you as many as we can. It's objective by nature. It has to be. That's what makes science so uh, such a a powerful tool. It doesn't have the morals. It can't. Yeah. 
Well, it can, but... Well, the person applying it understands. Yes. It. yes. In other words, but, you, you can't have a moral that says, I shouldn't see if I can make a microwave oven. Or right. you're not a scientist. You're right. stopping your exploration of a out of a preconceived right. notion. If I can't, I but must. But right? if you use science to invent a nuclear bomb big enough to destroy the entire planet, and you say, well, I can't get involved in morality. I have to test this thing. <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> because that's a science. See, to do the end product, you have to, to test your product. You can't make something without testing it. That's the experiment's not done. But you see, there's a point at which completing the scientific process and morality have to intersect just like the vertical and the horizontal beam of the cross. <laughs> and I mean that. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> <laughs> we're at the, we're at a, definitely at a crossroads. That's what yeah, I think, 100%. We are. Well, as always, Paul, awesome. Yeah, man. Hey, always awesome you. talking to you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. And you know, the thing is, I will close by saying, look, we are at a crossroads. And... It's a unique time because we have enough food. We can get good enough food. Like you guys, all of us here can get good food. We got the best entertainment we ever had. We've got probably more diverse opportunities to fully experience life, love, and technology. I mean, you know, think how wonderful. I mean, look at the gadgets. Like, look what you can learn watching a good documentary or even like I watch what my little boy learns on his iPad, you know, how to say certain words and what a dump truck is, what an ambulance is and things that he really loves. That he, There's real live information that he needs. It's just, I'm glad I don't have to sit there and tell him all that because I'll take him further than that because mm -hmm. that's doing it for me. He's getting kind of elementary training. But we we are really at a point right now where we've got to be careful not to get trapped in the numbness and the passivity of being high on all the magic because what's holding the magic together is the simple stuff like farming correctly, keeping the waterways clean, keeping the skies clean, protecting the fabric of nature, not exterminating species, not poisoning the oceans with oil spills that are unnecessary. We don't even need fucking oil. We haven't needed oil since Tesla and it's just all about a money-making thing. So there's the ethics that goes against the morals. So we, we're... We now are at a point in the development of humanity where we have to tie science and religion together again so that the heart and the head are holding hands or the head is going to destroy the heart and the planet and we're going to go into a shamanic journey that results in an overdose and only god will know what happens next and for those of us like me that have truly lived that's okay i have no problem dying in fact i'm excited because i have theories i have to check out <laughs> like, okay that's what's next for me but when i look at my two-year-old boy i don't want him to have to live through the death of silliness to miss out mm -hmm. on what we got to mm -hmm. experience so i think all of us right in this room are old enough to know that what we're doing right now is more for the children than anybody because mm -hmm. they're the least equipped to deal with what is very likely to come through from a many angles right now, right? It could be a stock market crash. We could have a solar flare from the sun. We're overdue for a solar flare that said it's probably going to knock out all the electronic systems on the globe. How many days can we go without food before it's riot time? right? Everything in this planet is controlled by electricity. I mean, people won't know where to go. They won't know how to communicate. You know, you knock out water pumps and filtration systems. I mean, this is scary shit. People don't even think about that, right? So, you know, we've, we've got a chance to really take worship every day is magical and say, what can I do to make the garden a little safer place? And what can I do to help people get back to the basics we got to get back to, to keep the world healthy, to keep the temperature uh, from going up faster than it has to go up, to keep the toxins down and to stop putting poison in kids and calling it food and have nutritionists and doctors lying to us about nutrition. And, you know, we, we got to get past making money to telling the truth or we're going to die. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's a beautiful Excellent. way to end. Awesome. Thanks again, Paul. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. Love you guys. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. 
Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>